Hello there, folks. Hi there. Woo! <laughs> it's another episode of um, Virtual Cast, episode 28. Uh, and we're going to talk about 2020 as a year, uh, give our experiences, uh, disappointments, surprises, and the best of the best as well. So, yeah. So, uh, just to be sure for anyone else, um, who will be watching it basically in the future, I, I think, because Saturday, everybody's out doing something. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like, everybody's doing something else. Not if you're in my country, you know. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. and over here, most people are sleeping. Um. <laughs> yeah, that was, me this, that was me this morning. I had the lion to end all lions. I was like, right, I've broken up from work. I've got two weeks off. And literally, <laughs> like, this is time to crash. I've got blog stuff to do later on. But other than that, I could just say, right, forget work. I'm sleeping because I was just overdue for it. <laughs> oh, we had a we had a like a Christmas party at work yes yesterday. So I'm 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 alive. I'm alive. <laughs> Kinda. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Party party during plague. What what's the picture with the uh, what was the one the medieval one. When the people were partying during the plague, I don't know, I don't remember. Back death, we almost. <laughs> I, I remember that pictures of all that. Like I don't know, whatever. I know Maybe. of the I know of the first World War Christmas one, but that's a different story. So. <laughs> I'll find it out. <laughs> anyway, so um, during this episode, we're gonna talk about uh, different games, uh, except for the top five games of 2020. Everything else, every other list, uh, they don't have to be releases of 2020, just to be sure, uh, for the folks who will be watching. Uh, but, yeah, some of you have probably, Luke has tried, and Kyle, you have tried to put 2020 releases, mostly, yeah? Yeah, I, I just, I just have played that many, so there's that problem with, uh, that unknown problem in the world. Nobody knows about, but anyway, yeah. Should we start with uh, our experiences of 2020? Okay. Uh, I don't know, Kyle, do you want to start with uh, your experiences? Want to talk about what have you sure. done? Start with a little bit of positivity, even though there's only so much. Yeah. So, one of my favorite experiences, and I, I had a lot of great experiences in 2020, a lot of great gaming experiences too. Uh, the first one I had is I I really enjoyed, and it happened very early in the year, just some of the travel that I did and the weird places that we ended up playing games. For example, with you and Victor and Andy when we sat down on the back of a suitcase at the airport and played uh, and played Silver, that really stuck in my head. Uh, I did the same yeah. thing with Victor when we went out to Las Vegas and we you know sat around and, and just had small travel games and sat around and played them in odd places people stopped and looked it was a lot of fun yeah do you have a so that's my do you have a picture for that um i, I do i think i sent you one uh um, yes that's not the one that's not oh. the one that's not the... <laughs> well we're getting all my experiences in anyway there should be a picture of me <laughs> sitting at the airport <laughs> i see it will be it will be soon yeah oh, some no, order would have been... <laughs> yeah um, is it the picture of the airport? Yeah, it's somewhere? the only one that's in an airport. Uh, oh. Not the picture of me sleeping on the floor. Figure, figure this as teasers, everybody, for what's to come. <laughs> yeah, I haven't found that, but oh, yeah. Maybe I didn't upload that one. It seems oh, you don't have it. Either, either that, you need to, yeah, you need to name your photos. Or <laughs> Otherwise, you'll never find them. Yeah, oh, well. no. Oh, maybe. Well. There, there is a picture of us sitting around playing uh, silver on the back of a suitcase at an airport. You can okay, contact yeah. me separately if you'd like to see it. <laughs> Have you got an Instagram channel? Maybe put on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will. <laughs> All right. So, but Kyle, you want to? We're gonna go like we're gonna go experiences of Kyle, and then go to Luke, and then to me. Kyle, what else do you want to share? Because I have those pictures here. <laughs> I can show okay. them. All right. So this is one of. It has a picture of pandemic rising tides in it. And it's a table, and 
So yeah. one of my favorite things to do every year is to go to visit Eurovision and watch it. And of course, that was canceled this year. But what they did was they had some sort of a concert. And so I had my very own little Eurovision uh, uh, sort of and Netherlands themed gaming party at home. And so you'll see I've got I'm watching the whatever Eurovision show they did on my iPad. I'm playing Pandemic Rising Tide, which is the most Dutch game theme I think I guess I have. I'm drinking Waterloo water. And it was my my little Eurovision gaming party all by myself. And that was just very memorable for me. It was a nice moment to sort of mm. experience this thing in a way that was meaningful to me. Ah, that's <laughs> that's good. <laughs> I'm trying to. Think, as soon as you said this was a Dutch game, I instantly trying to think: Is there any other Dutch games I know of <laughs> that could be a? Uh, well, there's used. Dutch Golden Ages, but that's not good solo. Um, um, <laughs> what, about, what about Lowlands? The um, yeah, the I guess about, I could have played that one. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, the one with the sheep mm. and the dike, is that, is, yeah. that, uh, is that Dutch or is that a different country? I, I, I think it is. I, I think it is. I, I can't say for sure. I'm not sure <laughs> as well. Yeah. I'm not sure about my games. I have played anything. That's anyway, it. Pandemic <laughs> Rising Tide definitely is. So, yeah. <laughs> so I, I felt safe with that as a pick. <laughs> All right. So... We mostly agree on doing two, but maybe three. Do you want to share right. one more? My third one experience? is most of the rest of the pictures. I bought a new house, and I was <laughs> and I had the experience of packing up, moving, organizing. Well, and somewhere in there, renovating my house to create this game room. So that's a. a, a and Tom Basil was helping game. you. Okay. No, he was not. That's that's <laughs> way. That's what my game room looked like when I started. It didn't even okay. have those walls. It that's was bigger than most of my. That's bigger than most of my house. <laughs> <laughs> there were you, and then I, you know, I, I put in wall. Well, I had a contractor put in walls, and then you know painted them purple, and uh, then I got all Ooh. the games moved in in those big boxes. Okay. And then I oh. organized the game closet. Now that was that's me else. playing in the game. That was uh, Spirit Island Con. Um, <laughs> then there's okay. a picture of me with the no, you, no. Well, no. I also that played one? that. Um, <laughs> oh, I see. That's that me one. having organized my game closet so nicely. Um, closet of shame. Well, it's actually a, a closet of opportunity, but uh, <laughs> shameful. And I, I just—it was a great experience to sort of. Well, it wasn't all that great. It was a lot of work to pack everything up, decide of some things I didn't necessarily need to keep, and move a lot of other things in and just get this game room organized into a way that I'm able to find everything and have everything at my home and just really yeah. enjoy the game room that I created for myself. It's it's changed. I was the same when I made this one, so I just look Ooh. forward to a time when I can actually have a room as big as that to make a game room, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I was about to, like in, in February, I think, was the, uh, the Dice of a Cruise 2021 that was basically canceled, yeah. So mm -hmm. I was supposed to come to uh, to Kyle's place and I would see the new house and everything in your new game room. But yeah, due to well, certain come another time. <laughs> I was going to say, can, we, can we come next year? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Any year. I need a, you right. know, I got a fly. If, if I do a Dice Tower cruise, I got to fly from England anyway. I need a stopping point. <laughs> oh, you have to come. We'll talk about that. <clears throat> anyway, um, so these are Kyle's experiences. Uh, uh, look, uh, what you want to talk about? Should I share the screen to Borgame Geek or anything? Um, I think you can probably just search these ones for their respective websites. But uh, I mean, there, there was only so many experiences I can think of because I didn't. I don't classify like playing a game as one and the half the world shut down for six months of the year cancelling all my things i was looking forward to so I, I guarantee if things take if things clear up by 2021 like mid there's going to be experiences next year i cannot wait for but yeah the there were two that got in before that kicked off best one probably was portal con back in january and that seems like a <laughs> over a year ago that seems but um you say, if you if you even if you just bring up the portal website, but you might be able to find a portal con specific one. It's it's kind of like a local con that it, um, that the publisher does for the Polish basically, mm -hmm. and I think they've done like online versions now, so that probably won't work as much. But 
the I mean, if you go to the portal website, that's probably just as good anyway. Okay. But, um, <laughs> but essentially, what they do is that it's a local con. They sell a bunch of their stuff. They get people in to play games. So it's like a little mini con, but it's very specific to Portal. But he also uses it as kind of like almost like an investors meeting in a sense, where he's telling everybody in the big theater like, "This is coming out. This is our plan." So it's cool to get like the inside scoop on things like the you know that Detective Season One was announced back in January. You know, so it's good to get like the keynotes and things like that. Um, but Ignacy is a great bloke. The rest of the whole Portal gang are just so welcoming. And myself, a couple of other reviewers, uh, Board Game Ramblings, joined me there as well. And we just had fun just socializing, playing a few games, trying to find something that was in English, not Polish, but <laughs> we did find a few. Uh, just talking to Ignacy and Joanna and some of the other gang. But even just having a bit of fun in the evenings, because coming from whichever country we came from, everything was dirt cheap. So... <laughs> You know, buying beer constantly throughout the night in Poland is as easy as anything. Eating some of the Polish food. Uh, I think we went to one place next to the venue that was a brewery. It had had lots of like the beer barrels everywhere, but they made a big deal about honey as being used as one of the things in it. And they had a mold yeah. beer. Hmm. came in a proper dimpled beer mug, like proper size thing like that. Mold beer with honey. I didn't even know mold <laughs> beer existed. I know you could do it yeah. with wine and cider, but that was the first. And it's just like, well, <laughs> I really should have got that photo because I did take a picture of that one. <laughs> and the, the, the whole event is just good fun. And shame it won't be on in 2021 because it'll be too soon. But uh, it'll be good to see the portal going again. Uh, after that, it was probably just a, the only other convention I was able to go to, which was Aircon, um, A I R E Con. If you're searching that, it's it was just a small con a few yeah, years ago. Now it seems to have got pretty big in the UK. Fair play to him. But uh, Mark Cook runs this one along with uh, his helpful gang. Takes place all the way up in Harrogate, up past Leeds, which is a bit of a trek for me. Uh, so, um, uh, a I R E Con, but it's the all one word. A, I R, E, e con. con, all one word. Okay. Sure. Oh, it's here. Is yeah. It? So, I mean, yep, yeah, that's the one. So it's sponsored by a few. It's grown a lot in the last few years. We've got like the big convention center in Harrogate. That it does. Uh, there are some photos. If you go on the Google um, search that you're on, you'll probably find more photos for it. But Let me see. it's just oh here. Yeah, it's just play games, have fun. That's essentially the deal. They've got multiple rooms. They get a lot of people. Everyone's just there to play games. A few publishers are there doing retail and occasional demos, that kind of thing. You know, they get some good names in there. Rodney and Paul Grogan have visited that. But it's just a very friendly convention. But it's also got the advantage of being in a nice area. Harrogate is a nice city itself it's very picturesque you've got parks you've got architecture everything it's just very pleasant so even if you're kind of gamed out you can just literally walk outside and find something nice whereas you go to something like the uk games expo and if you walk outside you're kind of in the middle of an airport it's not really the same <laughs> but it's, it's it was just a nice experience but that took place the very day i think it was like the weekend before isolation started like yeah. we got oh this is going to happen but this convention was still on and this was like the last big event that we knew we were going to get for the rest of the year so i made a big deal that i'm going i'm staying and i'm going to milk this for all it's worth <laughs> and it, well, it was worth it but it was kind of like a bit of a sad day at the end where i'm like i've got to go home now and that's it for another year oh no <laughs> and that's when it all began <laughs> true yeah um Cool. That's I want. I want to get to just one, whatever it would be, just one UK con. I haven't been to any of these. Like Essen and Gen Con and mm. and the Cruise are the ones I've been to. But well, and all yeah. those ones you have in Estonia. It's it's really it's really this one in the Expo. I would say the Expo is the big trade one. If you want something closer to Essen, um, yeah. The Aircon, I would probably say, is the biggest <coughs> one. That is just pure go there for games. Like just to play games, I, I can only think of one other con that might come close to it. But I mean, it's a stretch. I mean, it's a huge gap between Aircon and Games Expo in terms of size and scale. But sometimes you don't just want a trade fair. You want to actually just sit down and meet people. And we get a lot of the UK content creators turn up at this one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the one in Estonia that we have, Wargame Camp, more 
like a just people gathering together, about 100 people playing games, uh, bringing games. So basically, we are making the library itself <laughs> with like sharing games with each other. So, but yeah, uh, this is something bigger, you know, but probably not so big as, as the big cons, like, you know, the game expo and uh, Essen and etc. No. So, yeah, that's cool. Great. Uh, you you want to share another one or you have one or two? <laughs> Maybe I, I can't really think of it as an experience that I mean it was a it was a good experience but it was also a draining one it was it was part of what I did on the blog during isolation because I had all the more all the time in the world at that point because we weren't even working for most of April and then we we're on reduced hours and before we got told we could go back to the office I made a point of doing a series on my channel called shelf by shelf which was yeah essentially doing like going through every single Kallax square and explaining why I had the games on there. I didn't realize how big an undertaking it was going to be, you know, but doing it, trying to do just a bunch of short videos. But, you know, you, you scroll down that list. If that's the playlist, it's what we got. 20, oh, oh, it's, it, it's not quite in order, but I think there's 50 odd videos, 48 to 50 videos for that because <laughs> there's 48 Kallax shelves. And then I did the above them as well. So I think it was like 50 videos. In succession, I think I, man I managed to do one per day of content. Not necessarily shelf by shelf, but I did one per day for the, the entirety of the last like three odd weeks of April. And it was tough, but it got a lot of good feedback. And I think it was just quite fun to just go through the whole collection and just realize, dang, I, ain't got, I got a lot of games. <laughs> so I need to play these. And you know, it worked quite well. Just don't expect it to happen again for a long time. <laughs> yeah. I've done something like that, like basically my collection run through. I've done a few of those videos, but in a more robust way. I'm just, you know, uh, recording my shelf and then going through that. Uh, but basically the whole shelf, because yeah. I don't have that many games. Uh, I went through them when I had like around 80 games, maybe 300. But yeah. now I have like 50 or below 50 games. So it's really easy to do it in one in one go. Yeah, but you, you're doing it better. Anyway. <laughs> I'm kind of, kind of curious to see what's changed in that one. I've, I've, only, I've rearranged a few. Wait I think a every, moment. I think, every, I think every game in that uh, oh, that's the same. screenshot I still own. So That's the same here. At least that's what I know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, that's, uh, that's an undertaking. Uh, to, it's, it's, it's a lot of work uh, if you want to go through all the games that you have on your shelf and then talk about them briefly. Finding words for each of those makes you crazy. <laughs> In my opinion, at least. Yeah, when, I, when I tried to do that, it was too much. Um, all right, so uh, these are looks experience, um, experiences of 2020. And um, I want to talk about mine too. And uh, the first experience I want to talk about um, is about the game. So I have folks who I sometimes play games with. They are not huge gamers. Uh, they do play video games more. And I, I try to show them more complex games, but they don't have that attention span to, you know, to listen to that many rules. And it's really hard to play those games with them, especially the first time we play it. Like the second or third time, if they still like it, yes, uh, it will be better. But at first, it's so frustrating sometimes. But um, one evening, uh, I was talking to one of the guys, and we we're like, I don't know, we were talking about deck building games. What are what are the different deck building games, and uh, what can we play or or buy or anything like that? And then we uh, talked about Harry Potter as well. So we basically uh, was like, I was like, oh, there's that Harry, Harry Potter game, the Hogwarts Battle, and it's. Um, it's it's themed based on the movies. You have those different packs. Uh, I think like seven packs that you open up, like a campaign game. So, but it's but it's a your usual whatever a Dominion style, you know, uh, uh, deck building game. So nothing special. And I was like, I don't want to buy it. Really, I'm I'm hesitant to buy it because I don't know if I like it or not. So we decided that we're gonna split the cost and buy it for two of us and eventually we got two more friends and then we made them play that game uh, i'm gonna maybe show we made them play that game 
and then we're like do you want to share the cost between the four of us now <laughs> so <laughs> the game became cheaper and cheaper each time <laughs> It was the experience uh, actually playing the game or just running the consortium. It was, <laughs> it was, it was both, but I mean, um, this this game yeah. is is a simple game, and um, it was a great experience <laughs> because we all we are all fans mm -hmm. of Harry Potter, and while we we're playing the game, we put the music, the Harry Potter music on. We discussed what were the films, and they were like arguing about, oh, that was in that one, that no, that that wasn't like that. We're like. We're discussing the movie while playing the game, and we decided we're gonna buy all the expansions and then, you know, just have this as our game now. It's basically, we're not gonna play any other games, we're gonna, this group of people, we're gonna concentrate on playing only Harry Potter and going through all the scenarios. And the first time we sat down to play it, we played uh, like four or five games in a row. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a special experience because, um, it was because of this franchise, not because of the game, and how we ended up buying that game, because I didn't want to buy it at first. So that was a surprise and a great experience for me uh, this year. You can just imagine having people over for games and saying, you enjoyed it? Ah, oh, do you want to contribute to the cost? <laughs> yeah, right. well, I, I brought you here. <laughs> you play my game. You pay for it now. <laughs> yeah. You mean Basically, money? because they're not the ones that, that they don't buy games, really, so if we play, we play my games, so... <laughs> to be fair, they should be paying me for half of the stuff I've done. You know, most of my mates have been taught so many games by me. You know, it's kind of <laughs> like, you know, you could at least buy me a drink. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> uh, to be fair, one group of mates does cook for me when I come around, so that's good enough. <laughs> that's good. Oh, uh, there's, there was a comment as well. Uh, look, it's to you. Uh, oh, wait I love... <laughs> I love your shell by shell videos. Oh, it's cool. There was Shout a lot of them. Yeah, eight bit, say eight bit does like app reviews in the UK. Um, but uh, yeah, there was there was a lot, but people watched them. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, they were only a few minutes each. <laughs> All right. So uh, this was a smaller experience, but the biggest experience I had, and I think Kyle will agree with me, has been already. I was there the second time or the third time. I don't remember anymore. But the Dice Tower Cruise. Oh. So, Dice Tower Cruise is an amazing experience for... Uh, Rub it in. <laughs> yeah. Look, um, with the Dice Tower Cruise, the thing is that you can do everything else that you, like, that you can mm -hmm. do on the cruise. Like, uh, I don't know, the usual, usual vacation and going out and, yeah. you know, swimming in the ocean and things and tourism. But at the same time, you can game a lot with, with, with different folks uh, from... There, there have been people from Europe, from different countries. Uh, we played Barrage with... Um, I, I stumbled upon a group of people. They were Norwegians, I think. And we just... <laughs> like, and I, somebody taught me Barrage the same day in the morning. And I was like, I think I can teach it to you. <laughs> but I have never read the rules. I just what I remembered from the game, like, <laughs> let's try. So we, we struggled a bit, but, but it, was, it, it was a good fun. So the Dice Tower Cruise is, it, it, it is the, um, the, I don't know. Best. It, it is a great experience uh, to <laughs> have when you, when you want to uh, play games and have a vacation together because the library, mm. Dice Tower Library is huge uh, and it gets even bigger, I think. Yeah. That was the one that I was thinking is that is, it's only on for so many days and I'm kind of worried that I'd be there and you'd spend more time playing games than actually doing all the other stuff because I love cruises. You know, you, a cruise is perfect. I get, the, I get the evening entertainment, I get to eat as much as I like and wherever we're visiting, I get to jump off ship and go explore. I just want there to be enough time for that as well <laughs> as playing a bunch of games. <laughs> uh, well, when I go on it, I just do games the whole time but that's because I've been on many cruises in that area so mm -hmm. no the, <laughs> yeah. the, the thing is that you, you still go out you, you, you would still like at least when we had those stops at different ports uh, in Me mexico and whatever else do i do call, call do you remember this year remember? i didn't get off the ship until the very end though so i don't remember <laughs> okay <laughs> i just say <laughs> i stayed there and played games the whole time i, I get off every day because i've not done anything around that area so it'd be a first <laughs> 
Yeah, but, but we still got out and, and had some little bit of the tourism going on as well. And just exploring, because I haven't been to those places so in, in America, <laughs> so I want to experience that as well. And I get to play new releases, I get to play games that I don't have in my collection. I would probably not have them, not buy them, or they are not in Europe. Mm-hmm. As of now, something like that. I always play like new games releases. I even played prototypes. I I get to know new folks from from media. So play with uh, the Dice Tower folks as well, you know, and etc. So like I have kind of like friends who I see once a year during that Dice Tower cruise, or who I saw during Essen as well. And these are the people I love to play mm-hmm. games with. And I get to teach games and learn new games. Uh, there are Dice Tower shows as well, the different shows, the g- game nights and whatever they are. And last time there was, um, uh, we, we didn't go there, Kyle, but there was a show, um, maybe you went there, uh, Dice Tower on ice. So oh, yeah, they I were skating. Like mm-hmm. They were skating and answering questions, something like that. <laughs> it was kind of ridiculous, but it was. I was fine. gonna say skating, quote unquote. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm was... not aware that they're particularly great skaters. Maybe Eric Summerer, just because he's in the cold area of the U.S. But <laughs> I heard they struggled. Yeah, yeah. But it's a lot of fun, and also uh, you get um, as a kind of a, sp- a sponsor. They have sponsors who give out uh, games, and you get uh, when you arrive to Dusty Cruise, you get this um, a bag of games bag or two bags whatever they yeah. are you get a bag of games that they present you which is really cool as well so this might be older games might be some newer games uh but o- always cool to get some free stuff as well <laughs> it's so it, getting to a us convention is so high on the wish list I, I don't even care which one at this point but it's i mean the hardest bit is the logistics because of the flight i see yeah yeah it, it is but with this one as well uh, when I go there, I, I forget about all the problems, everything I have here in, in Europe, in Estonia, and I just enjoy myself mm-hmm. 150%, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Time. anyway, Dice of Cruise, let's not talk about it <laughs> because I'm sad. Well, I... One more thing I would say about that, though, is so for, for some of us who've been going for many years, lots of the same people show up every year. And yeah. so it's, it's great that you can sort of see these same people and have that same experience. Some people have at bigger conventions, except here in a much yeah. smaller group. And it, it's just a lot of fun to see your, see your friends that you only see once yeah. a year. Well, people in America are going to go to this one more than other countries just because of the logistics sure. front of it. But it's still like you'll still get some. And to be honest, I put aside money every month to as a kind of holiday fund. It's barely been touched in the last couple of years, not just because of COVID, but just because of not have probably is traveling solo kills your ability to go on a vacation for cheap because you have to pay for the second imaginary friend that you bring along and <laughs> it's, it's just sort of piling up and up and it's getting to the point now where it's like you know what i could actually afford to go on this dice tower cruise if i really want and then they cancel it it's off a crying out loud <laughs> yeah so uh, by the way there was the we played uh, betrayal legacy on the cruise and like two years ago we're, we're, yeah it was two years ago. Oh, we were, we were like, we're stuck on the ship. So what, whatever, we're going to play through the whole legacy campaign. So <laughs> I would never do that except on the cruise. So, yeah, all this, right. This Dice Tower Con is on the wish list, definitely. <laughs> Good. All right. So uh, we babbled too much. So we're going to go through disappointments <laughs> of Tom Swainick really quick. Yeah, on the Sorry, subject, I was getting feeling sad. <laughs> <Let's Yeah. go. laughs> That was me babbling too much. Sadness. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of sadness. All right, so Kyle, give me your two disappointments of the okay, year. Well, my two disappointments, I'm going to go with games that I was expecting to be great that were not. Those are disappointments <clears throat> for me. Um, and uh, so the first of those was one that I was quite excited for, and it just turned out to be something very different than what I, wa- what I thought it was, and that was Marvel United. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm still going to give it another try when all the rest of the stuff comes, but the base box was, it was a very simple, almost a children's game, and I was expecting it to be something, I don't know, something more exciting, something more interesting, and in the base box it's just very repetitive, 
and uh, doesn't you know none of the the characters really feel like they need to. Mm -hmm. They just sort of all feel like they're doing the same things with different symbols. But I don't know. I was I was very underwhelmed by this one, and I I will give it another try. I, I've kept mm -hmm. my copy, uh, but. Um, I don't know. Yeah. It was. I, it, it made me feel a little bit sad. I'm glad to get a different viewpoint though, because I've been just hearing like I don't hear about this game much, but like in the last couple of weeks, it's just appeared on a lot of surprises of the year, or even like in some cases, a couple of top tens. And I look at it and I just go, <clears throat> I can tell by the cover that is a children's game. It's like it's, it's got chibi superheroes. Of course, it's a children's game. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe if you have kids, you approach it differently, but I don't. Yeah. And I played it by myself, and I played it with other people, and no, none of us really found mm. it to be very interesting. It's just playing cards yeah. in a line and doing the symbols that it, they show, and it just it just never came across. Yeah. Not bad I, haven't, me. I haven't played that one, and uh, look, I I don't like I like Marvel, but I don't care about such themes in board games. So I don't know. So, I've got Marvel uh, champions. I'm good. So. <laughs> Marvel Champions is much better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So your second disappointment, Kyle? My second disappointment was uh, a game that I was also really excited for because I like a lot of things from this publisher, but it just was also very underwhelming. And the game is Pendulum. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> this one was the the, the real time this one. Even, this wasn't even a disappointment. And I didn't expect a thing from this. <laughs> uh, well, I I'm, I I approach almost every game with with hope and excitement but this one it i mean it didn't end up looking that great the, the, the components didn't feel that great and none of the people that i played it with came away thinking oh that was interesting everybody was like okay that was a game i, I don't know i just it kind of was a letdown for me especially because i've liked mm. lots of the other games that uh, they've come out with mm. in recent years yeah, that was probably yeah. the only disappointment link, the fact that it came from Stonemaier and was a bit of a dub. But then saying that, I don't love every game they've brought out. I do have some like top 10 favorites that are on my shelf from Stonemaier, but it's not like every single one of theirs is hit. But it's just when I heard about this one, I thought it's a Euro game in real time with blatantly no theme. It didn't look, as you can see from the photos, like Kabo Wise did not look particularly enticing. It's just like, yeah, I could tell this was going to be a bit of a dud, and it turned out to be. I mean, this was definitely one of the worst ones I'd played this year. So oh, you played it, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, I played and reviewed For it. For me, it was a disappointment. I think I gave it a four. I blow average. I just really didn't know. <laughs> <it. laughs> yeah, I, I haven't played this one. I was looking forward to a new game from someone games, but I looked at this one real time. I didn't care the looks of it. I didn't care the theme. Basically, everything was like, no, I'm going to skip that. I'm not going to invest my time into this hot garbage. No, <laughs> no <laughs> I don't know. No pun intended, invest your time. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no pun intended. All right, so uh, Pendulum, um, not so good of a game. I think it was disappointment on, on, on many people's list. Mm. All right, look, what's, what's, what's your two disappointments? Uh, two there. Let's start with the mild one first, because I still look at the game sort of. I think, I think it's above average, but from considering who it was from, this had to be. But well, the thing is, a lot of the games I didn't like this year, I kind of didn't expect them to be that great, so they weren't necessarily disappointments. But Halato is the lesser disappointment of the year. The Uwe Rosenberg one that's just got reviewed. I still gave it a six. I still think it's an above average game. But this is a guy who I've got Odin. Fields of Arl, Caverner, still like some of his others, still respect even the ones that I'm not a fan of, like Agricola, I still think, yeah, this is a good game, it's just not for me. And there's others like Loyang and Oren Labora that I want to play. So I thought, okay, another farming game from him. I think we've done this to death, but let's give it a chance. <laughs> it should be half decent. But it just, this one felt like a step back in terms of hmm. theme, because the, a lot of its mechanics are literally airlifted from every other game he's done. Like the, they didn't feel like there was anything unique in it. Playing cards at any time, fine. But those cards are literally just, do you have this criteria, get a bonus. And as much as that can be cool, the fact that it, you literally draw them blind and you could have like, you could just chain a bunch of them off because you drew lucky is a bit of a problematic thing when you've got a two hour game there. Uh, yeah, it's as the looks wise, I mean, that the community center board there the big building looks nice but the rest of it is kind of standard but the mechanic of sliding that building across 
with those five little building tiles you can see there. Uh, yeah, you know, you've got little boulders in the way that you've got to shift. It's just it feels very mechanical. It didn't feel thematic at all. It's like I'm growing ten different resources and they're all the same as each other, except for how you acquire them. You know, you're mm -hmm. still basically going here's five generic buildings, pay resources, which becomes a math problem. Do not play this with anybody who's not good at arithmetic because they will AP like crazy, and it just. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd still play it and probably get some enjoyment out of it, but I was kind of expecting this one to be like one of the big Euros of the year. And it's like, no, oh, great. <laughs> it right. felt like we're regurgitating ideas and we need something a bit different now. Well, that's yeah, bad I, news. I'm still waiting for mine to show up, so I'm, I'm hmm. hoping I'll like it more. <laughs> yeah. Some people do, do like it a lot, but I can't see people sort of looking at all of the Ruby Rosenberg's line and saying this is the one they love hmm. or this is the okay. best one. Not when you've had some big pedigree games beforehand it's like okay something other than polyominoes and i mean this isn't polyomino but you can tell that polyomino and farming is kind of a shtick and it's like come on something different <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay. that's, that, that, i'm not a fan that, of rosenberg so yeah that I one really i care about that one i was like okay fair enough this will be good but their big disappointment which everybody would have called if they're watching this is Efferfields. that oh. one i was excited for the and I still have my copy of it. It's still literally on the table next to me. I've still got half of the like creature stretch goal things for it. And part of it is great. The dream aspect is great and it does look great. You know, the really good models, when you go into each major dream, not every dream is great, but you know, some of them have got some weird and surreal stuff that happens. And that part's good. But the big disappointment, and this is a problem with a lot of Awaken Realm stuff, is the grind aspect is too much because in between the dreams you've got this little mini map dreamscape that you just move a counter around it you've got one way systems all over the place it makes no sense why you have to do it <laughs> it's like it, it doesn't tell you it's just padding but you're basically looping the loop around this little mini map you are just on on top of that you're doing these little slumber adventures which are kind of like mini dreams but you repeat them so often ad nauseum that it's almost like playing an anime RPG like Final Fantasy, Skies of Acadia and that. And you know when it occasionally just like screen breaks and you go into a random encounter? Like Pokemon, you walk around the farm areas and suddenly you get attacked by a little rat thing. Yeah. And it, eventually you get to the point where it's like, oh God, another one. It's like exactly the same feeling with this. It's like you go mm. through the map, slumber happens, it's the wraith from another dimension that you've killed about five times already. It's just like, oh, again. <laughs> And that grind just soured the experience like crazy. And it's got some other weird issues, like that portrait board is a, impossible to use in the <laughs> landscape. Uh, people have carved it in half. That's how bad it is. You know, when, when people are willing to cut your game in half, <laughs> that's a problem. But it has a lot of promise for it. And so much so, people... I mean, there are some people that don't mind that grind. I feel mm. like they will get pleased by anything, though, if they like it. But they love it great they have said that they're going to do a continuous dream mode version of this. So they're going to put in a rule set to make that grind smaller and mm -hmm. hang on to my copy until that comes out and give it another try then it, because I've got wave two stuff coming next year as well. So it's like, it's got another chance, just like, uh, <laughs> just like your one with a uh, Marvel eyes. It's like, I'm going to give this another try, see if it wins me over. But I was really keen on this one because I've got tainted grail. I enjoy that one. And yes, that has a grind problem as well. But I've house ruled that with literally one house rule and I've sorted it. Like I've fixed the yeah. game. If I tried to house rule this one though, I think I'd have to break half of its fundamentals. Well, I, I, I really liked Ether Fields, but I, about, oh, two thirds of the way through the first campaign, I just said, I, I'm skipping that dream map and I'm just going to go and open a new dream. And I was going to say, how do you know you're two thirds of the way through it? <laughs> well, okay. I, I mean, I got, I got it, like. It, 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 yeah. It ended up being about two thirds of the way. Through. All right, because uh, I got twenty <laughs> hours in. I got like twenty hours in, a good sort of eight plus dreams, like major dreams, and it just that people have sort of said, "Oh yeah, it gets a bit easier to do it eventually." But it's like, yeah, eventually is not good enough. You don't build a game to say, "Right, the first twenty hours are going to suck, but the, <laughs> the, the last thirty hours will be amazing." It's like, well, no, I yeah. don't want to sit through the first twenty. Yeah, I was enjoying the dreams, but that whole move around the map and collect the keys and go around in a circle four times and fight that stupid janitor—it um, <laughs> was—it uh, <laughs> yeah. was, 
it that that part got old really quickly, and I said, eh, well, let's uh, let's just open up the next dream and and, and pretend that we're here. Uh, <laughs> That could okay, work. Yeah. It's just I think that would break half the game if I did that. So it's like I need to see what this continuous mode they do is when they yeah. bring that back. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, Enfields and Hallertau for you. Um, so my picks for two disappointments. Uh, as I told you, they don't have to be games released in 2020, but the games that uh -huh. I <laughs> these are the games that I experienced in 2020. I was looking forward to them, and I was disappointed. And the first one is the one that I brought with me from US uh, after the after the Dice Wars cruise. I was like, uh, I was um, I was with you with a few days after the cruise. I remember sure. or no? Yeah, yeah. So went to, I went yeah, to Target. So yeah, the, there's a game called Villainous, you know, and uh, it was really hard to uh, get this game in Europe, at least I know in Estonia. Uh, so I was like, ooh, they have this game. So I bought this game, I bought two expansions right away because it's Target and why not? Because I wouldn't get them here. Let's buy it all because I'm gonna love it. And um, I played it with uh, one friend and my girlfriend. She's not the biggest gamer. Uh, she has played only a few games <laughs> during her lifetime, basically, yeah. She's not playing games, but but she was really... Uh, encouraged by this theme and things, so <laughs> this game is about the Disney characters who are villains of Disney, and they each have their own. It's like a, a, symmet a symmetry, uh, asymmetric, asymmetric game, asymmetric. Thank you, <laughs> game, and uh, you have your own kind of a set of uh, winning conditions you have to fulfill, and then you win the game. But this game is also a ton of take that and uh, pulling people back from their winning conditions and basically this game drags uh, a ton at least when we played it as a free player game uh, it was dragging it was like you almost win and then two other folks they just you know combine their powers to drag you down and then there's another person who's now in a winning position now you have to drag him down and it was, I don't know, maybe it was a three-player game, but it was such a bad experience. I, I don't know. I, I didn't expect it to be so much like that. I wanted it to be more, it's, it's thematic, it's, it's cool. You are playing but villains. All those, what? <laughs> you are playing villains, after all. <laughs> it's true, but it was, it was, you know, during, during the take that, hmm. In the sake of just doing that, there was not, mm. there was no fun in that, and I'm, mm. I'm not, a, not, a, I'm not opposed to take that games, but villainous was extremely disappointing. I wanted to be like more like building up, building up, and then I win or almost win, you know, but here always dragging me down, and having a luck draw. Mm. <sighs> I mean, it's meant so, to be a light game for families in a sense. I've, I've still not tried it, but I've, I've kind of just thought, yeah, maybe I'm not going to like it from a mechanical perspective. But like you, I would have gone, oh, Disney theme. Yeah, I'll try it. But oh, it's, I, it's I not a light game. And it, when Tom Vassell put it on the introductory list, it's not that wrong. game. No, no. Don't, don't do that with people who have never played games. This is not the introductory game. Yeah. And, and any game where you've got card abilities does not work as a light introduction game. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, well, I can see the text think, on all those cards. That's text I've got to read and understand with sure. an asymmetric deck, which is unique to you. That's not an introduction game. Yeah, it does have the one thing it does do well is each of the different villains comes with a nice guide that tells you what you're supposed to be focusing mm -hmm. on and which things would be a good idea to use. But that's to kind the of thing. Help you get a, in. It's a but, big guide. Um, Anytime you've got to read a strategy guide for your game, <laughs> that's yeah, uh, like, that's not um, introduction. <laughs> But I, don't I, to, I, think, I don't have to give a guide to my parents when I taught them how to play Sushi Go. You know, here's the guide as to how tofu works. It's, mm -hmm. It doesn't, you know, they, they can pick <laughs> up the basics from one game and then they can just play it after that. But if I said, if I said to my dad, right, you get to play, you know, well, I forget their names now, but I don't know, Octopus, Octopus Lady or something, then, you know, the witch, <laughs> the witch underwater witch, then if I give him this guide, it's just going to throw him off. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, I quite enjoy the game, but I play it a lot as a two-player game. And in a two-player game, you have to make a, a conscious decision of whether you're going to go after knocking someone down or build yourself up. Yeah. And so it, the choices tend to be more deliberate. It's like, well, I could, I could give you something bad, but you're going to just knock that out and then get ahead. And so you, you tend to focus a little bit more on your own plans. So I, I think maybe you might enjoy it more if you tried it as a two-player game. But maybe, yeah, yeah. As a three-player game, it just didn't work for us. And out of the box, you can play with six, but I don't think that. that no, I think that's where my madness God. lies. Nah, no. they, um, <laughs> it, it could be that a take. The problem with the take that mechanic in a three-player game works with area control as well. Is that usually two people go against each other and one person yep. gets the head? So, yep. I mean, that can easily be a factor of this game. Uh, it is, it is. Basically, two people dragging that one person down who was, who was almost winning, like a munchkin type, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, like, just a small example about uh, the difficulty of this game is, it's not, it's not a difficult game, but, for example, my girlfriend loves tapestry, and she, when, she, when I taught her tapestry, she was like, whoa, she, she gets it, she outplays me every time we played it, she outplayed me, and this one, she just could, couldn't get it. Like, like tapestry it didn't flow for complex than this one. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. One. All right, so also that's uh, better games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, she plays wingspan. It's, it's fine. Tapestry for was disappointment for nineteen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Wingspan. Yeah, wingspan. Teach her wingspan. Go on. <laughs> no, no, she she loves wingspan as well. So that's ah, good. Insane. Redemption. <laughs> But anyway, so um, my other disappointment uh, of the year, and it's it's a it's a minor disappointment because I wasn't expecting too much, but I was Kyle talked about this game a lot, and I was like, I need to try it, and and I I love pushing luck in games, and why not? And that's the, the quacks of Quedlinburg. Oh, I love it's, that game. It, it, it's also <laughs> not a 2020 release, but I played it for the first time in 2020, and in this game, what disappointed me is that. The whole game is uh, basically getting those chips out, uh, chits, whatever they are, and just placing them into, into that circle. And you can get extremely unlucky, and during my game, I was ex extremely unlucky compared to other people, and it was a souring experience. And I feel like the game should have... Like, there are some mitigation rules, whatever they are, but uh, they are not enough. Yeah. I just... I was expecting a, a cool push your luck game where pushing my luck was like that's up to me to decide how much I push my luck and you know how much I get basically here as well but if you start getting those white chips and you're still at the beginning of the circle and everybody else is basically at the end of that circle you know it's it's frustrating and it's too much luck within the push your luck <laughs> I don't um, know I'd, no, I'd go with it. I mean, I've I've played it. I can see its appeal, and certainly it's well produced and it's simple. But I, I didn't expect too much going into it, despite the hype, because I had the thought, okay, push your luck. What's the problem with push your luck? It's luck. You know, there's going to be <laughs> that. So it's like, well, that's fine if you're playing a game that's 20 minutes, you know, 20 to 30 minutes, a filler that's push your luck. But this is a 60 to 90 minute game, depending on yeah. the players you have. It's got multiple rounds, and yeah, if you do draw, you look shocked by that one. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a game last longer than 45 minutes. No, nah, this one easily would be an hour with four players. I mean, you've got to go through multiple simul rounds and do the drawing. <laughs> People have got to choose what chits they want, and, you know, there's only so much control you have. I mean, it, like I say, the game was all right. It's just, like I say, for that length of time, I don't want push your luck. Europeans like to think, Kyle, before they do any decisions. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, we don't. We just jump in. Actually, the problem is, is that Europe. The problem is, particularly British, think too much before they jump into decisions. That's the thing. It's like it's the all right. over. Oh wait, I haven't right. done think my first turn. turn but for crying out loud, but make your move. <laughs> all right. So this was my other disappointment. Um, the biggest one was villains, of course. All right, but now we're gonna get into um, surprises. Uh, top five surprises list. We're gonna rush through that as well. And uh, just to be sure, at least for me, not all games on my list, or not <laughs> most, most games on my list of my top five I, are not 2020 releases, but I played them for the first time in 2020 and was surprised by them. 
But I know many of those games, when they come out at the end of 2019, it, like, it's hard to get them if you don't go to Essen. They're almost like 2020 games, you know? <coughs> so, but um, we're going to start with uh, Kyle. Kyle, what's okay. your number five? Of surprises. My number five is a game, and I think this is technically a 19 release, but my first time playing it uh, was in 2020 for sure, and that was with you, and you taught it to me, and I quite enjoyed it, and it's a game you talk about all the time, but that is The Grim Masquerade. Ooh, yes. All right. And, <clears throat> I mean, I had, had had it sitting on my shelf for several months by the time that we played it, but I just yeah. had a really good time with it, and I played it again since, but... It was uh, it's it's light, it's fast, it it looks great, and the way that you play things allows you to sort of do the 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 bluff type of thing, in a way where you don't have to sort of sit there and lie and turn all red. Uh, <laughs> I just I had a great time with it. It was a, it was a surprise that I enjoyed it that much. Yeah, I'm surprised you you, you played further than you did because I I realized that you didn't like it that much. But we played oh, no, a three player like game. It. I, I don't think I like five. it as much as you do, but oh, uh, and that's why, and you talk about it all the time, so maybe that's where you're getting that. But no, I quite enjoyed it, and it was a, a pleasant surprise for me. Luke, have you played it? Nope. Barely even know much about oh, this. You have to try it. <laughs> it's a good game. I mean, this, this is my go-to game now, uh, next to Wingspan, basically. That's something that everybody understands and can play easily. It's a, like a deduction, hidden roles game. In a very simple manner. Is but, Brothers Grimm or that sort of yeah. setting? Yeah, I've not even read that stuff. So, yeah, this is it, it's completely new to me. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, the, the, the theme, you won't get the theme there, well, the theme but you get beautiful really pictures. Come across. Um, <laughs> but it's a Except, lot of fun. Yeah, all right. All right, so um, that's your number five. And look, uh, what's your number five? Number five. Uh, not the biggest surprise in a sense, but uh, one that did come up. I thought this was going to be like, eh, this will be meh, not too good to go, but it was Glasgow. Uh, okay. Two-player only game. Um, Lookout games, I think. I don't think it was a Cosmos game. I think it was Lookout games. Uh, Lookout, yeah. yeah. And, I mean, I, I sort of thought, okay, that is the most boring title in the world. I've been yeah. to Glasgow. <laughs> it's a nice city when you get to the center of it. I do mean the center of it. But... Uh, it it's kind of like what kind of game are you going to base on this? And the plot is just like building stuff, early times. It's like oh god, this generic thing recycled. So it's like it didn't even look. It's not even that much of a looker. So I just thought this is probably not going to be very interesting at all. Yeah. It wasn't too bad at all actually. I mean, I, I think I gave it a seven. I still think it's a good game. It's 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 a very simple rondel thing of moving the meeples around the, those tiles to get the resources you need to build those stuff in the middle. It's a bit like Takedo where the person at the back moves. So how far you move is an mm. impact. The rules are dead simple. Um, you've got a bit of variable set up. And when you're putting stuff in the middle there, you're triggering rows and columns based on like the factories you do. So you can build up little mini engines. It's just like, <clears throat> I thought like, you know, for a game I expected to literally just go yeah. and chuck it away. I didn't, mm -hmm. I don't think I kept it. I think I sold it in the end or donated it to the library, but I was close to keeping it. I think if it, if it was more than two players, I might have, kept it but it's hard for me to get two players to the table yes but i was all kind of like you know what for something that i thought was going to look horrendously boring it surprised me at being pretty decent yeah that's, that's something that's something uh, at first i was like maybe you should try that one but i rondell just i tried quite a few rondell games that doesn't work for me i don't know why this mechanic just not for me maybe but uh, the mini engine that you talk about i was uh excited about that one all right, uh, so uh, my number five is a game that was released, I think, in 2019. And uh, by, by that time, basically, I've played quite a few roll and write games, and I wasn't sure if I want to try another one because they're all basically the same. And I'm I don't like I don't like the ones which are which have the cards. So I, I like to roll dice, which is fun. But flipping cards and, and then uh, writing down or, or you know, uh, painting something, I, I wasn't sure about that because, like, not for me. I tried the Avenue was the one. I didn't like that. 
and it was something else. Co Koda oh, it's Kodama? No, Kodama is something different. But there's a connect Kodama version of Avenue. <laughs> oh yeah, maybe yeah. So, but uh, cartographers, um, I wasn't expecting much from that. I was like, I don't know. I I just I'm just gonna buy it because there's one friend um, I play with who is a painter and he likes very simple games, and let's try it out. We'll see what happens. And the first time I tried it, tried it solo, and I don't play solo. Not at all. <laughs> but nobody wanted to play with me <laughs> during that day. So I was I was sitting there <laughs> playing solo on the re like on the terrace of the restaurant. So you can you can you can bring it anywhere so it's a s small game. But I really enjoyed it solo and then I showed it to another friend and they also really enjoyed it and that other friend was like Oh, come on, the other guy. So let's let's try it out. It's a really cool game. So the the word of like of mouth we, we went we went further in our circle of friends and everybody enjoyed it it's flipping cards and then uh, basically marking down the planes and water and things uh, and you want to position them the way that you score the most points and there are the scoring cards which <coughs> says that the forest near mountains give you points or if you fill out the edge of the map and the bad things can happen um, because you have those monster cards. When they come up, uh, you have to pass the uh, your sheets around, and then everybody else writes on like on your sheet. But the, the, the monsters are basically minus points. You have to uh, circle out the monsters, basically fill the spaces uh, surrounding the monsters, so you not you will not get any minus points. But they still fill up some of the, the portion of your sheet, which is bad. And yeah, I I really enjoyed it. Cart cartographers. I was extremely surprised by how much I liked it, and I was just was like, hmm, let's try it out. And if I don't like it, I'll just give it away. So my number five, cartographers. Whatever the uh, it, it's just cartographers. A role player tale. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> forget the forget the universe. It's not needed. <laughs> yeah. All right, Kyle. What's your number four? My number four. My number four is a game that it looked pretty good. It was the same artist who did all of the... Uh, I think it's the same artist who did uh, Burgle Brothers and that kind of thing. Maybe not. I don't, I don't know what the connection was, but there was one. And I got it, and I opened it up, and it was just all these polyomino pieces everywhere. And I, I put it away. I was like, okay, there's no way to organize this tiny box. Uh, I finally got it out and played it, and it was so interesting and I played it with some other people and everybody's really liked it. The game is called The Grand Carnival. Okay. Never heard of that. Um, it's one of those, you know, you, you've got this board, mm. which is I think it's four by four squares and you've got five little meeples and you're going to use them to, to mark off an action. So you do an action with a strength of five, four, three, two, and one in whatever order you want. And those will allow you to gain these these foundation tiles to buy the attractions to move your people oh. around your your carnival. And you're trying to fulfill there's some goals. And if you get them first, they give you special powers. It was it was a really interesting game, but it's super fast. I mean, you play seven rounds of five actions, but each action is it could be as simple as just taking one tile. The one mm -hmm. where you move the people around requires maybe a little bit more thought. But it's it's super fast. It's a little difficult to organize, which is what put me off of it initially. Uh, but the game itself is very good, and I was very pleasantly surprised by it. Okay, cool. Uh, I saw this on Zegers' list, I think, of surprises or top ten games of. Yeah, no, this was his top ten. This is what surprised me because he put it at his number one. I'd never heard of this game at all. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Tom absolutely hates it. So this <laughs> is something I've got to see. <laughs> yeah. By the way, this is the same artist as the Burgle Brothers, Ryan okay. Go Ryan uh, Goldsberry. Okay. Yeah. I knew there was some connection that put it on my list, uh, but I I don't know. I really liked it. So okay, Luke, have you played it? That one? No, no literally that 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 top ten was the first I'd even heard of it. Okay, but me too, he, yeah. Him love it to bits, and him hate it to bits. It's like, oh, I've got to see this. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you have to play it. Yeah, we have, we have to try it, definitely, because I'm now excited as well. All right. The one thing uh, I'll say is it does what? have solo rules, and those are not as good. So, 
Be careful. Don't about play that. solo. <laughs> well, it's okay <laughs> solo, but That's there are a lot of much better <laughs> solo games. So. Okay, so Luke, what's your number four? Number four, let's see, probably. Hmm. Maybe. Think, uh, <laughs> maybe. Uh, like I say, there was either there was a more, lot more disappointments than there were uh, surprises. Put it that way. Um, I think probably Kanban EV would probably be the next surprise. And even then, it's not that I was surprised it was good. I already love this <laughs> game. This is one that I've owned the Stronghold version of and knew I already loved. But one thing that I was a little skeptical was that, okay, you've, you've changed it to Eagle Griffin. Okay, you've changed it to Ian O'Toole. But I remember that out of all the Vita the Surtis games, before On Mars was a thing, you know, Kanban was one of the harder ones to grasp and teach yeah. because of the horrible rule book and the, <laughs> you know, the, it had problems. So I thought, okay, so you're going to try and rejuvenate it. But I thought, this is still a bit of a complex game. It's like, how easy are you possibly going to make this? Are you really going to be able to fix that problem enough that this reprint was warranted? And I have played it, and they actually did achieve it. You know, the graphic design on this one and the rule book are a hundred times better than they were before. I mean, I have taught this to people without problems. I didn't take me long to grasp it myself, literally just like checking out you know, the rule book itself, even before I watched the video on it. And it's like, wow, you actually did it. I, I, I <laughs> thought it was just going to be, look, looks nicer, but it's still going to be too complex or too fiddly. But without changing any actual core mechanics, they somehow managed to set it out in a way that is a lot more approachable. Yeah, I've never played Kanban, and this one looks cool, though. I but Vitalis Serda is... I've never tried any of his games. I don't know why. <laughs> Do so. Uh, they're, they're not for the light of heart. Uh, I, 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 played, I played old Kanban. Um, but I found it way too complicated to teach, so I'll, I'll be excited to. Uh... This one I just found easier. The rule book is set mm -hmm. out a lot better to be, and like the board itself just looks more appealing. The departments are more clearly laid out. You know, you can see right that's to that bit, that's this bit. The upgrading of parts now looks a lot better. I mean, I'm not saying it's a breeze, but it's light years easier well, sure. to get. <laughs> oh, I, I like the maple okay. cards. What they're there? Let me see. Oh yeah, these are really cool. I like, mm. I, like, I, like, I like these meeples. So at least she's still there. Um. Andrew's still there, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, the angry one? Okay. <laughs> it's like Bob from the Them Stories. I, well, that's what I heard about this game, so. Mm. But all right, all right. That's um, Luke's uh, number four. Kanban EV. What's EV. What does EV stand for? Electric vehicle, basically. It's just a re-theme. Just because it's now modern day, it's all electric vehicles. Okay. It makes no tangible difference mechanically. It's just the theme. <laughs> <laughs> it's so you don't confuse it with old with old Kanban. Yeah, that too. <laughs> oh, like yeah, the VT culture essential edition. Anyway, um, my number four is um, I, I saw that on the on the BGG it seems to be like a 2018 mm -hmm. release, but the Kickstarter fulfillment was in 2020. So I don't know what to exp like. I'm not sure what year this game is, but it seems to be a 2020 release. It was in the uh, Essence Spiel list as well. So, and uh, the surprise was because the publisher contacted me, or like their distributor, or whatever they, the partner, and they contacted me about the two games, rather abstract games. Do you want to review them? I was like, let's try it out. We'll see what happens. They need the reviews for the Essen uh, online, the digital, basically. So people can watch them and see if they want to buy the game, etc. basically. I was like, okay, let's, let's try to do that. I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to manage to do the video. And uh, I got the game on, like, on the last second. <laughs> like, basically, I had to play it really fast and then do the review really fast. And that's uh, Glyph Chess. And why I was surprised by Glyph Chess is, first of all, I really enjoyed the production of this game. It has this really cool, I don't know what they are, like resin or whatever they are, the pieces, but they are coated in this kind of a gold and, and silver. It seems to be like a, um, it's like a chess-like game, but um, it's a tactical combat game with those pieces having different special abilities. 
and um, some block the uh, line of sight and, and some of them can jump over and some of them can destroy everything surrounding them etc. There's the pawn which is a member exactly but the necromancer or whatever who uh, can uh, get their his minions out whatever and then he will be surrounded by minions he cannot walk then but then the, his minions he can manipulate the minions on the board as well so it's it's a simple game it's this very strategic and tactical game using dice as well but the dice they don't add too much luck it's it's a ton of strategy and a ton of tactics you need to adapt to that great production i was very much surprised by the game that i never heard of um that it was like it's a chess like game uh whatever but it was a great fun glyph chess so <laughs> yes <laughs> you don't know that game at all <laughs> no it has That's the word fine. chess well, i think we've talked I've, about i've that. heard of it but yeah <laughs> i would have jumped on it it seems to be the game that like uh there's some kind of a magical world um and like comic books, the Japanese or, or Chinese comic books, and in in those books they play that game as a magical chess or whatever. So, yeah, let's go to Carl's number three. All right, my number three is a game that I probably would not have played in any other year than this one, but there was a period when I needed some solo games, and so I had heard about a particular print and play game. And I played this one, and I played it and played it and played it, and it was so much fun. And that is Bargain Basement Bathysphere of Beachside Bay. Um, it's a print-and-play game, but it's a campaign solo game. And you've got your submarine that you're going down, and you're trying to get to the bottom if you can, or turn around, because every time you go over a space, you're going to have to mark something on it. And if you land there again you're going to start to take some damage. And so you're rolling dice, but as you take damage, you get fewer dice. And so you're trying to manage your air supply, your power, get down, get as many points as possible and get back. And then after you've done one session, you go on to the next one. There's a new sheet. You throw the first one away and you have different things you're collecting. You're collecting fish for an aquarium. You can cash them in for various special abilities. And there's just a lot of surprisingly a lot of story and a lot of fun and adventure to be had on what is essentially 30 pieces of paper and i just i i really liked this one i had a lot of fun with it and i would not have played it in any other year okay yeah <laughs> nothing to say again we're we're getting into the obscurity here what was, was a say, surprise like obscure titles <laughs> Top five books. I mean, that's why they're surprising. You know, they they yeah. come out of nowhere. Well, I wouldn't have looked at it otherwise, and that's why yeah. it was a surprise, I think. So, look, what's your number three? What was that? Uh, number three. It's a reskin. It's a complete reprint. And yes, it is pretty much 99% the exact same game. But it surprised me enough that if I was to pick this one game out of this franchise... I'd pick this one over the rest, and that was the small world of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it is a complete cash grab. <laughs> like, you wouldn't yeah. believe it. Yeah, it yep. is a small world with a different theme. There's practically no mechanical changes whatsoever, apart from the fact you use islands instead of one big map. But I quite like the islands. It gives, the, it gives more of a variable map, because you use different islands depending on what player count you're at. But I thought, like, okay, this is just probably going to be a reskin and yeah i wasn't surprised to find oh yeah it's basically just small world but <clears throat> it had some nostalgic little easter eggs for people like me who have played world of warcraft to death in the past so it's like oh yeah i recognize this raid i recognize this uh relic and stuff like that so there was quite a few little easter eggs there it used the same artwork they got blizzard involved so it's not like they were poorly rendered versions of their counterparts it's like no this looks like how they look in the game and if anything, the World of Warcraft theme actually fit quite well with the small world mechanic. You know, it's a fantasy world where everyone's at each other's throats. Well, that kind of works with this. <laughs> you know, it makes sense that the Taurans would be against the humans and stuff like that. And you can even play this in a slightly varied mode where you get more points if you are going up against your opposing faction. 
doesn't matter which player it is, but if you're controlling an alliance faction and you decide to go whale on a, a horde faction, you actually get a slightly better reward. So that is, and you can play it in a kind of team mode where you have a neutral uh, alliance and a horde player. And so there is that incentive. It's just like, you know, just a nice little couple of tweaks there to make it a little different. But I just thought like I would tell people, skip it, who cares? But I'm actually now like, even if you've never played World of Warcraft, if you want to get into Small World, I'd probably recommend this one over any of the other Small Worlds. You know, it's standalone. You haven't got to worry about it being expanded up the wazoo and being bloated or anything. This is just a pretty <laughs> nice comprehensive base set. And I just thought yeah. it would be a forgettable cash grab. I hmm, quite liked okay. it. I mean, it, it's it's the one that I would go to to teach Small World now because my hmm. regular Small World has grown out of proportion and has way too many expansions that I just can't take out anymore. So it's a great starter set. Yeah, it works better than I thought it would. Okay, uh, so that's Small World of Warcraft. Uh, I didn't like Small World, so I was not really hesitant to try this one. So, <laughs> <laughs> so my number three, now, <laughs> my number three, I realized that this game didn't come out this year. <laughs> because I, I thought it would come out this year. They, they said it would, or at least maybe I got the wrong impression. Uh, maybe it got, it got delayed because of the Did COVID. Did you play it? I played it, yes. Oh, and okay. <laughs> it, was, it was a surprise because it, Estonian designers, they contacted me and, oh. you know, I'm not a huge fan of Estonian designers. I don't really know any. Like, I, and I know <laughs> two guys maybe, but Estonia is not so, um, it's not so popular regarding the designers. But this one... I, I was really surprised by this design because I didn't expect to to be it that good. It's it's not the best game, but it's still a quite a good design, and that's Lunar Base. And they went on Kickstarter, and now it now it shows 2021 here. But <laughs> I don't know maybe it got delayed. So I I got the kind of a all, like basically done version, but. Um, a prototype not the uh, final components so uh, and this game is about building up your um, spaceship or whatever the space base and you're connecting those cards to each other and some of these cards have like main actions that you can do and you can also play cards from uh, from your uh, hand as like one-time actions and you're trying to get to the winning conditions of like getting certain symbols out uh, like pe people out or uh, scientific symbols etc a little bit of like seven wonders duel so it just it was fun connecting the, the cards and spreading yourself out and trying to get even better main actions that you can do like draw or or uh, you know get more cards from the center or get out uh, more actions uh, and uh, there are the costs on the cards uh, which are like uh, on the right side upper corner of the card like for example this one costs four uh, circles and you're like you have to you have to get points and you're pay paying those costs with your points but if you connect those circles on the cards like when you build up your space station uh, the cost goes down. So, for example, in this case, this one, this card, playing this card would cost uh, less, depending on how many circles you already have connected. So, you make yourself, uh, you make playing cards even cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, and you get your engine going. So, a simple design and a cool idea. I like that. I didn't expect that from Estonian designers. Yeah. So, another game nobody heard about. <laughs> yeah, basically. <clears throat> Surprise! <laughs> All right, Kyle, you're number two. All right, my number two is one that maybe you've heard about. This game looked really ugly. Uh, I saw it. I saw pictures of it. Oh, and then it looked no. Like it looked like <laughs> oh, it looked very abstract. Uh, but eventually, I, I heard some good things about it, and I finally tried it. I played it at uh, Dice Tower West. 
Uh, I eventually bought it and played it with Victor a lot of times. The game is Dominations. Okay. Uh, I've heard of it. Portmanteau of Dominoes and Nations. And uh, <laughs> you've got... You're these, selling it. Uh, <laughs> you've got these triangular tiles that you place, and you're going to score various things on various tracks, and you're going to build towers of these discs, and you're going to try and build next to these cardboard standee monuments, and you've got a nation, and you've got goals that you're trying to uh, to achieve. It does not look like very much, but there's a whole lot of game in here, and it's a lot less abstract than it looks. It's um, kind of like uh, Through the Ages is a very abstract-looking game that carries a mm -hmm. lot of civilization feel. That's also mm -hmm. how this one is, but it's a little bit it was much shorter and much simpler than that mm -hmm. game. I, I was really impressed with this. I really liked it, and I am I, I was just very surprised. Yeah, something I want to try, but I'm not keen on the look here. So, no, Luke, have you played that one? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that name, but I mean, you saw it as dominoes mixed with whatever. It's like that. <laughs> that didn't necessarily sell it, but <laughs> that's just how the title the title came to be. All right, that's why it's spelled the way that it is. But it's yeah, not it, really dominoes. <laughs> it gives me Viceroy vibes here. I don't know why. Yeah. It has that look, but it doesn't really feel like Viceroy at all. All right, I see. So, uh, Luke, what's your number two? Uh, number two is... I've put this one not as my number one, because I think this is slightly more surprising, but uh, the... I'm trying to think the best way to explain it. This this one I don't think got released in 2020. Eventually, I think it got kickstarted in 20, 2020, and I did play it this year because they were at Aircon with the prototype of this, which mm. still looked pretty good. But it's a game, but it might be a 2021 game. Whatever, I played it in 2020. Um, it was called Die of the Dead. This is a dice game filler dice game based on the whole mexican you know day of the dead festival um yeah. i think that's it day of the dead is it or something of the dead um but it's got the exact same style artwork i mean that movie coco this is the same sort of thing pulled from it so oh, the, cool. oh. you know it uses coffins that you basically put the dice in they're like <laughs> they double the shakers but it, it i thought like all right this is just probably going to be some like cheap and cheerful dice game but this is one of the most well-produced mini dice games i've ever seen because yeah that's wow. the best picture so that staircase you're trying to get your dice out of those coffins and up that staircase which is like the memorial thing that they do you know as they they remember the dead um mm -hmm. based on the life they had but the way it works is that the coffins are like different actions that you do with the dice and you basically choose one of those actions to do pick up the coffin, shake the dice that are in it. And this can be for multiple players because each person's got their own color. And the coffin might say, roll the thing. And if any are doubles, take them out, you know, like get rid of them. Or if so many are this value, you know, move them up the chain. So you're trying to move them from the left one to the right one so that they can get on the staircase. But it's kind of a little bit of push like a memory aspect where you're trying to think, well, hang on, that player's got more dice than me in this coffin. So there's a good chance I can get rid of some of their dice if I shake this one and you know go for it. So you're 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 not just trying to get your own dice through; you're trying to like screw up the other players as well. But I was just kind of surprised by a how gorgeous this looks for a yeah. dice game. I mean, it is pitch perfect Day of the Dead artwork with all the skulls and that. You know, the dice were good quality. The coffins being a shaker was a good touch. You know, once your dice go in there, you've got to remember how many dice you put in there. So it's like you pick up one coffin and forget that two of yours are in there. And it's like, uh oh, <laughs> it's like that caused problems. Um, a few little special abilities that you can grab as well on top. But and, you know, you get bonuses as you go up that little staircase. But for something that was like a 30 minute filler that I thought this is this is one of those like small. It wasn't like a big publisher. It was just somebody at a booth at Aircon. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm always a little bit like when it's like the indie games, you could sort of call them. I'm sort of like, you know, there might be a hidden gem, but I don't tend to look forward to as many of those. <laughs> but I sat down with this one just because of its sheer look and was surprised enough that I think I backed it. I think I actually went on its Kickstarter and backed it because hmm. it was quite cheap. Cool. And I just thought, yeah, you know what? This is a good little dice game. 
Yeah, it's like the the theme of our list is like never heard of that game, you know. Yeah, uh, and <laughs> you this one, game. I put it on my wish list because I I love how it looks. It just looks so so cool. It will be so easy to get it played with like anybody. It seems so. It's quite easy to to yeah. grasp. Yeah, the, the the four the the rules of each coffin on those cards are explained above, so you know what they do, and they're not complex. It's just pretty straightforward. It, it's it's kind of a it's got that push your luck aspect of right. There's a chance I might screw myself up here or not roll what I need, but that's what dice games are. But you're not taking sixty plus minutes to play this game. You're playing maximum thirty. So cool. Yeah, definitely want to uh, try this one out. Yeah. So, Probably not for twenty twenty one, but hey, <laughs> I played yeah. it. <laughs> Who cares? We we do our own rules here. Um, so my number two, and my phone just died here. Okay, wait. So, uh, yeah, my number two is a game that I. It it might be a 2019 release, like Essen release, maybe. Basically near the end of the year, but I played I played it on the Dice Tower Cruise, and I was surprised because it was like, that's not my type of a game, but. Um, the Corey Thompson from uh, Dice Tower News, so he was like, I'm, I, can, I can show you the game, I can teach you the game. Uh, so I was like, yeah, let's do that. Uh, I don't know why I sat down for this game, not for me, and I was surprised how much I liked it, and that's Cooper Island. Uh, Cooper Island, yeah, it seems to be 2019. A release, game we've heard of! <laughs> yay! <laughs> But I mean, like, even Kyle, I think you are surprised that I liked it. I was surprised you liked it. I because like it, but I, I'm not surprised by that. But I was surprised that you had any interest in it at all. Yeah, it's it's symbols upon symbols and, you know, tracks. And, like, it's not a point salad game, but it feels <coughs> so like a point salad game. Because, like, the points you get here, it's not like hundreds of points. If you get 20 points, you're already good. Like, if you're very experienced with this game, you can get, like, maybe 40 points. I don't know. How many? But I, I think I, I got around 20. 20 would be a lot. Okay, I, I got <laughs> yeah. around 20 and I was like, <laughs> Corey told me like, oh, that was a really good play for me. It was like 20 points? What? <laughs> but I mean, like, it, it looks really cool. It has this Taluva style building up uh, your island uh, higher and higher. And you're covering the older spots. You're getting resources from there. It's a spatial puzzle within your board. And then there's the, the ships that go around the um, the islands. Uh, I don't remember exactly what was with them. They're That's basically like a track. time track. No, it's your score track. A score track, yeah. Sorry, I've already forgot. I haven't played it in... in I played <laughs> during the cruise, so and I want to get this game, probably. But a lot of things going on. and uh, But the worker placement here in the center, really cool actions, uh, really cool decisions. I wasn't expecting to to grasp this game that well from my first play because I don't really like such complex Euro games. So, yeah, Cooper Island, a great heavy Euro. It seems to be heavy, at least for me. Yep. All right, let's go to number one, Kyle. All right, my number one surprise, and I, again, I don't. The theme of this list is I don't know that it is a 2020 release, although one of its versions did come out in 2020. You're uh, surprised it's game, 2020? <laughs> the, the game is uh, a game that I looked at and I thought, "Ooh, that doesn't look very good." Uh, it looked a lot like a game that. Uh, what's that game? Uh, it the Golden a Ages. Lot like Duel, Duel of Ages, yeah. A Duel of Ages, uh, but. But the game is called Hexplore It, and it mm -hmm. is a solo, you can have your, you, solo or with cooperative, if you like, RPG game. You, uh, you, you play it, you've got a character, you've got a, a whiteboard, and you mark off your various traits as you increase them. You're moving around, there's, there's three now, there's one where you're fighting a, a zombie king, there's one where you're fighting a fairy... And then there's the new one, which is fighting in the desert, and there's some sandworms. Anyway, what you're doing is you're going around having quests, you're building up your character. There were something like 20 different characters in the box. There was a lot. And I, I set this up, and I just had a great time with it for most of the summer. 
I played it again and again and again. And my brother came to visit from Las Vegas, and he played it, and we played it. He wanted to play it again and went out and bought it himself. This was uh, this was just a very big surprise, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I heard about this game only from you. I've never played it, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the theme continues. I don't know if anybody else has played it. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Luke, what's your uh, well, number one? You've heard of this one, at least. Right. Must have heard this one. And this one, like I say, Die of the Dead probably surprised me more in a sense of, oh, will I like this game or not? But, um, but it sort of just popped up, and I thought, oh yeah, it's got the look. This one literally just came out of nowhere in terms of its releases because Renegade have not pushed this game at all. They've like pretty much just gone here. It is, play it. So that already makes me go, oh, I probably won't bother with it then. Then my buddies at Board Game Rambling reviewed it and said it was really good. It's like, okay, I'll give it a shot and see what it is. And the search for Planet X <laughs> turned mm. out to be a very, really good entertaining deduction game. Uh, so much so that it's on my shelf. It cool. just, But it just turned up. There was no lead into this. Nothing to say this game is coming out from Renegade. In fact, I don't think it was even that easy to get in the UK. I had to grab the first copy I could find from mm -hmm. a store. There was no way I was getting a review copy of this one. I just thought, all right, I'll try it. You know, give it a go. Because I like a good deduction game. The spacey theme kind of sat well. It uses an app to populate the stuff so I don't have to mess around with a deck of cards or anything. Like, with, you know, I mean, I've got awkward guests on my shelf, but you, I would love that to work with an app rather than a deck of cards. The With this one, though, it's pretty straightforward you, you know you're looking up into space you can only see so much you're trying to find where planet x is and but you have to narrow down where it is based on finding the other space phenomena like asteroids and that of which the app knows the answers but everything works by a logic puzzle so you know the asteroids have to be in certain locations the gas jars have to be in certain locations and as you whittle down the choices you start figuring out that that can't possibly be in that sector it has to be in that sector you choose what you're surveying with the app. You've got research, which gets you like some additional logic rules in the game, like saying like a giant can't be opposite planet X, that sort of thing. And you're you're racing other players, and that those tokens that you can see, the miniatures are kind of like a bit. It's that Takedo thing again, like whoever's at the back moves first. Now, granted, I don't play this very much multiplayer because it's a bit multiplayer <laughs> solitaire at that point. <clears throat> so I play this solo with some rules that you can get from their website. Um, you essentially, I think, go to the Planet X. I think you go to Renegade's website or somebody's website and download the solo rules. But mm -hmm. it's pretty straightforward, but it just basically does through the app. And it, there's a bot that figures out stuff as it goes along and reveals bits and bobs. And you've got to figure it out better than they can, or like quicker than they was. And that is my way I play this game, mainly solo as a good thinky deduction whether it's on standard mode or expert mode you know you can put it on the heavier but yeah for something that literally just appeared out of thin air <laughs> for it to appear on my shelf it's like ah cool why didn't you push this out more renegade seriously yeah something i really want to try yeah. okay yeah I've, I've, I've not played it i don't know if I don't know. Can you buy it right now? Is it like out of stock or is it like on pre-orders? Um, no know. idea. I'm I mean, in the UK, I possibly. For but a while. Hmm. Yeah. I have it downstairs. I, mean, I, I've only played it solo, I think. Yeah. I mean, I, Fox I dropped for that as well as Renegade. So probably you've got a US manufacturer with it. I don't think it's like yeah. out of stock. It's it just to be out of stock. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe it was a small quantity of. Uh, of prints here yeah but something i'm looking forward to to try out because it seems to be something i would really enjoy the deduction element especially it's the theme of Just my list all my surprises it. you want to try <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're surprised that i want to try them <laughs> yeah <laughs> wait <laughs> all right so um my number one is another release of 2019 but also like most of the games that come out in Essen, and it was a Kickstarter game as well, that had a rather terrible production. But Kyle showed me the uh, the wooden version of that. You have the wooden version of the game. And I played this game uh, during the cruise uh, this year. And that's uh, Barrage, or Barrage, Barrage, I don't know how you pronounce that. 
So I think you pronounce it with a G and then add an extra B in there somewhere. <laughs> BGG. <laughs> Gabage. <laughs> Gabage. <laughs> All right, you don't always, yeah, you don't, no. Yeah. no you it's... give it phrase first, you give it phrase first. You... <laughs> okay, so, yeah, I, looking at this game, I was like, mm, no, but that that's the Dice to a Cruise. I, during the Dice to a Cruise, I try games I would never have touched or tried. And <laughs> not, not all of them are good, like Grand Austria Hotel, hate it. Uh, <laughs> but... <laughs> Barrage is the one that I was surprised that they enjoyed this one. It does look good. It's um, a lot of kind of work within the game. Uh, work replacement spots, these are cool. Uh, you can go with one meeple or more meeples. And you have to... This game has a progression of... You have to invest a lot into... Like uh, during the initial rounds. So at the end of the game, you get your engine really well going. And that's maybe what I like about this game. It's a lot of investment in the beginning, so you can have uh, better things at the end. And if you're not investing enough, then you might fail miserably. So this is not the game who, like, for people who, um, who want to have kind of a fun of getting stuff from the <laughs> first turn, you know? So this Sorry, is not the one. To a full stop there after that sentence. <laughs> uh, you literally could have stopped at one point. That would have been hilarious. But it's like... <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, I was surprised. I'm sorry. Was... <laughs> yeah, I get, I get. But, <laughs> but no, no. I, I, I like building up, uh, and I like uh, making my own engine and trying to make it work and. This is this is the one, and I was surprised by it because it looks hor the the box looks horrible, in my opinion. So, See, I okay. was I, I quite enjoy it as well. Uh, I, it was I think we I talked about it on my last year's list, but uh, I really like it with its expansion. Uh, when you add the expansion with all those different well, special one abilities that you can, but it came out with one. Yeah. No, but this that's is, not this... an expansion, is it? <laughs> All right, fair enough. No, but... okay, but it's it's a module you add in after you've learned the base game, and it adds a lot of different... It's it's a bunch of different actions that you can build toward, and it adds a little bit more variety in what you're doing. Um, I, I quite enjoy it as well. The rule book was a bit of a chore to get through, and oh. some of the production of the yeah, initial it's... edition was a bit rough. Uh, yeah. But I've I've since, uh, you know, fixed my own copy. <laughs> But yeah, it, um, yeah I, I was surprised that you liked it as much as you did. Cause yeah, yeah, it was, the kind of game you would. Yeah, another like Cooper Island, and yeah, the, the wheels are basically toilet paper. Uh, I wanted to flush uh, them down because it was abysmal production. There, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I think look, look, you you, you don't like this game. It seems. <laughs> yeah, like it at all. I mean, you've already mentioned the box and components and that. I mean, that wheel. The amount of times I lost components underneath the wheel spokes for that was just infuriating. <laughs> oh yes, yes. It, it was. I mean, forgetting aesthetics, which I think even the fans don't think looks great, unless they are just fanboys. But it's like they at least admit, oh, I love the game mechanically, but it looks like garbage. But. The, yeah. It was just far too punishing and long for that. I mean, I remember it being taking like three to four hours to play this thing. I remember like you you mentioned the investment time. Like if you start off if you start off bad in this game, you're done. Like you will not yeah. win at the end, and that and you know if you're doing bad at the start, because what will happen is you will build somewhere, and then somebody comes along, decides to build the thing next door to you, which completely neuters exactly what you just did. <laughs> It's, yep. There's so much of that going around. Oh, I, I didn't win the game that we played, but I, I, I don't know why. Maybe I did it on purpose. I was in the mood of like uh, <laughs> screwing Screw over everybody. the players. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like in the mood of like you placed the the, uh, the dam here. Damn you! Like, and I'm placed <laughs> the dam above him. Like. Great. I know. I was yeah. loving that, and I didn't win, but it got a little big. bit too. Restricted. And the weird thing is, the first time I played this, I won by not actually doing what the core of the game is meant to be. 
You're supposed mm. to be building these power plants and generating a ton of electricity. I literally won by just building up Germany's board in full. You know, built oh. enough electricity just to avoid negative points. But I literally just built everything on my board to get all that points that tick every round. And I oh, just yes. won that way. And it's just like, I shouldn't be able to win the game by ignoring its core concept. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah. Yeah, it could know, be but... just the first game. We, uh, most of us were new, but one person wasn't. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, the rule book was that. I'm glad I wasn't teaching it. But even oh. the guy who had it, I think, was struggling to teach it. It's just like, yep. Uri. It, I can. S the fact that some people like it, I can <laughs> see. But this is just one of those like too punishing and too long for the the. But the pseudo knockout thing is a big problem I have with some of these longer euros where it's like you know you've started off bad so you know you're done it's like i've got no way to catch up but you're not done <laughs> you're not done no you got another two three hours yet you know food chain magnates another problem child for that sort of thing it's just like no if i start off bad i should be able to catch and stand a chance maybe i still won't win but i've got to feel like there's a point in me continuing yep. but you get shut down after the first round or so because there's not many rounds in the game as far as i'm aware you know, you, you get five, shut down in the five? first... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, five? Yeah, fine. After round one, if you basically wasted your time and money and you got screwed over, your likelihood of coming back is very slim because whoever started off well is going to be rich, get richer. Yep. Uh, that's, that's the one, yeah. The, the, the investment you need to do from round one, yeah, that's... I like that. I don't know. <laughs> I like to punish others in games. Anyway, so... Um, I'm also yeah. not sure how well the game scales. Uh, because that board is going to be a lot more crowded if you've got five players playing. I only play which you four. Can do with the expansion. Yeah, I've only done four. Well, I've yeah. I've only done two. And one. You would not pay uh, me to play this with five. No, no, <laughs> so. I, that would be. But it comes. You, you can use the orange color if you want. Uh, <laughs> Don't care. People put five players on games just to try and sell more copies. They know yeah, that I... it doesn't work with five. <laughs> I, I don't think yes. I'll ever play five-player games if, if I can avoid them, but at least not this kind. Anyway. Yeah. All right. So, um, so uh, now we're going to rush through top five games of 2020 as well. It's, it's, the, the video is, is longer than we expected, but that's fine. You can get top three if you like. I mean. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's, do, let's do five. Let's just, just uh, go through them really fast. Kyle, what's really your fast. number five? Yeah. Speed yes. run. My number five uh, is Dune Imperium. Just came out a couple of weeks ago. Okay. I set it up. I've only played it solo, but as a solo game, it's fantastic. Two I'm weeks ago, for... it's already on your list. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I knew it was going to be because I really was excited for it. But it, it's, it held up. To, I mean, I set it up and played it every day, pretty much every day for that, uh, for a week of that two weeks. It's a, a great little worker placement -y, uh deck building little. game. It's it's not very difficult to learn. The deck building is different because you're really not going to go through your deck very much. And so calling things is a lot more important. And you're using the cards for a lot of different things, including where you're placing things. And you, you can, they might have some, some bonuses. They might give you actions. It's, and you, there's some cards you want to save for the end of the round for their, for their end of round effect. It's, it's a nice, interesting take on it. Um, you know, every time I, every time I have anything to do with Dune, it makes me want to reread the books. But then I remember how much I did not enjoy them. So, <laughs> yep. I, I'm I'm hoping I can avoid that. But I, I do really like Dune Imperium. Okay, something for me to try definitely. It's it's literally on order. It's in the post. It's coming. I know nothing about Dune. I've never watched the films. You know, the game did not look aesthetically pleasing, but people were just basically re-rating it highly. Told me it was a deck builder, which is one of my favorite mechanics. So it's like, right, I'll buy it. I'll find out. <laughs> but we literally only got it in stock yesterday. So okay. <laughs> give me time. <laughs> All right. So, Luke, what's your number five? Number five. Uh, get down, like I said, I'm, the problem is I've still got to release my top ten of 2020. <laughs> it's like literally today or tomorrow. So it's kind of spoilers, but... You know, this order may change. We shall see before I finalize that. But uh, the number five I will put there is a huge Kickstarter game. You know, it has one or two issues I have with it, but it's still like an eight out of ten for me. It's, I mean, I, it was, I struggled to get, find ten best games of 2020. So that was like, it, because half of them haven't been released yet, which yep. doesn't help. <laughs> um, 
But Dwellings of Eldervale is my five. The big giant Kickstarter, Loot Lorry, Breaking Games. This one, yeah. nice blend of worker placement with some card play, with some combat. It is a hybrid through and through. Yeah. Looks great on the table when you've got all the different color tiles, the different color tracks, the game trays, which actually have a purpose, not just simply storage. And, you know, I, I find that the combat can be a bit punishing at times, I find, and, but there is a variant to mitigate that a bit. And maybe I would have asked for a, a slight more variety in the card decks, but, you know, they're small. They're small bears. That's what brings it down to an eight. The rest of it, though, is very smooth gameplay. Doesn't take too long. You know, even with a few players, as long as somebody does an AP, uh, you have got a good amount of variety in the races, and it's just it, it kind of just had a nice hybrid feel of mixing both Amerifresh and Euro, and it doesn't hurt that it's got a very good solo mode in it. And as much as it is a complete gimmick, having monsters that make sound effects is actually pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I played the prototype of that uh, two years ago on the Dice Tower Cruise. Uh, we're playing with. Uh, with the folks from Breaking Games and uh, Sam Sam Healy as well, so and I enjoyed it so much. I mean, like the, the prototype two years ago. So I haven't played the finalized product, and I'm looking forward to that. That might be even my number one if I would play it. <laughs> yeah, I do really so. like it, but I wouldn't marry it like uh, Mike Delicio and a few other Dice Tower <laughs> lot have. <laughs> oh, marry me. Okay, so. Um, my number five, and I, look, I, I, I don't, um, I haven't played uh, too many two, 2020 titles. I, I, let's say I've played very, very few 2020 titles. Uh, I was focusing more on, on backlog of 2019. So, <laughs> so 2021, I'm going to give you the proper list of 2020 games. Anyway, but my number five is a game that I enjoyed, but it's a weird game in a sense of like the, the feel of it and that's Fort and uh, Fort is from uh, the uh, leader games who made uh, Vast and Root etc so all of their games are a little bit special you know but Fort it feels like a you know like Glory to Rome and uh, the 51st state and etc where you get to the certain amount of points and uh, you can talk the cards um, on the side of your boards, which will count as symbols, so you can boost your actions and everybody can follow your actions. But there are like, each card has two actions, your private action that only you can do, and the, uh, the, the public action that everybody can follow if they want to. But you can boost yourself, everybody else can do that only like once. And you're trying to get the uh, different tokens like pizza and uh, toys, I think, was it? And you're trying to uh, sell them so you can build up your fort and it's a little bit of deck building game but the thing is that the cards that you don't use uh, during your round you have to put them out in your yard and these are like the children who you didn't play with them so they feel uh, disappointed so they might go to another yard to another player's yard so and another player or players they can grab the cards from in front of you because you didn't use them during your turn which is a really cool, nice idea. It's a race to points game, uh, but yeah, it, it doesn't mean whoever gets to 25 wins the game. There are some other things you can score, some special doesn't abilities, hurt. perks. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. I mean, small little game, uh, but it is fun. You need to warm up to that game. You need, it, this is the game you need to play more to understand the concept of how you should build up your deck, because it's like a deck building, but mm -hmm. in a very strict way it seems so it's deck building five. where someone else can take the cards out of your deck mm. yeah <laughs> i gotta try it I, I think i skipped it but it's mm. it's on my list to try at some point it does look quite cool yeah As I, you mentioned doing a list later on i mean i do a list like a retrospective list one year later now already where i've done that since like the 2013 list i've done as well as doing the top 10 of 2020, I've got to put out the one year later of 2019, which hasn't dramatically changed, but it's still got some differences. But th this 2021 is going to be like, this was the original list, and then here's a completely different list for 2020 <laughs> yeah. when I come to do it one year later. Because there's, there's at least a good 10, 15 games that just haven't been released or I've had to skip for COVID reasons that I haven't played yet. 
So I could have a completely different viewpoint of 2020 by the next year. <laughs> yeah, me too. Game-wise. Yeah, <laughs> Not yeah. for the year in general. So, all right, Kyle, your number four. All right, my number four was another one of those. This year has been a year where a game would come and I would just play it and play it and play it. And this one, I started playing solo and then you know, they do. developed Scrabble. ways to do it online. <laughs> and um, th- this was, uh, the, the game is Scrabble. Forgotten Waters. <laughs> oh, Forgotten Waters, yeah. That's the one I want to try as well. Forgotten Admiral. Waters is just a fun story game. It's, it's probably about, you know, 80% story and 20% game. Uh, you've got some real-time aspects. There's great narration in this app that you play through. And each story, there's five that come in the game, but when you play them through a second time, they're going to be different. and Because different things are going to happen. There's surprises that will show up. You've got a character you're kind of developing. It's more of a cooperative game than a, than anything else, but you can you know have your own different ending based upon how well you did. Mm-hmm. The artwork's great. The humor yeah, the in the awesome. game is really good, mm-hmm. and it works both in person or there's an easy way to do it uh, through an online set of rules that you can play with somebody who's not in your room. It's just and, and the solo works well too. I really I was gonna say, like would it work? Does it work solo. well all right solo? Oh yeah, it's great solo. Hmm. The only thing solo is, you know, you, you're remember it's it's eighty percent story, and so you won't have sort of that combined story to share with other people. But I enjoyed it solo quite a lot. Yeah, it's yeah. very long though. That's the one mm-hmm, sort of mm-hmm. warning. There's a clear point in the middle where it says, "Okay, if you want to stop, you can." Um, but who wants to do that? But it is definitely a, a game that you're going to be having the experience sort of for a while. It, it's more of a movie than a TV show. Yeah, yeah. That's the first <laughs> game that Black Hat Games came out with uh, when they uh, backed off from the Asmo Day group. So I, I think it's... if we said first and only is is probably synonymous here. It's yeah. the only game they've come out with since okay. then. Okay. But... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they haven't brought out many. I mean... A few mates of mine have grabbed this. I think I skipped it as well because I just thought, look, it's hard enough trying to get games played at the moment, let alone campaign ones. Yep. I wasn't convinced it's, it's, that I would love it solo, but... It's not a campaign game. It's it's one story that you'll play through. There's five different episodes, but they're not connected. All right, okay. Oh. I uh, it's another one. I don't know. Like I say, I, I reckon the, the next three months, while... COVID stood on and nothing gets released because nothing gets released in the first three months of a year half pretty much <laughs> will literally be me catching up on 2020 games <laughs> <laughs> yeah but sure. that previous fair just not won me over I didn't like Gen 7 and I didn't go I didn't particularly like uh, Comanauts or whatever it was that was Pladat as well wasn't it yeah it was or something like that yeah the, those two didn't win me over so when this one came out I thought no oh, it's another one but apparently this yeah. is the one that the buzz so <laughs> It Comanus does not okay feel like Comanauts, and I still haven't played Gen 7. So. No. no. All right, so... Another one for the wish list. <laughs> Luke, what's your number four? Number four, let's try and go over this one relatively quickly. Uh, this is the year of Czech game editions, I think. Uh, yes, they've only brought <laughs> out two games, but the two games they've brought out have been pretty good. <laughs> you know, and they, you know, they do the job. Under Falling Skies is number four this is a pure solo game is a space invaders the game pretty much mm-hmm. <laughs> so insert any independence day or space invaders reference here um even the future armor gag which i love it's it's just it it's a dice game where that i mean bad photo over to that one but the mothership <laughs> at the top <laughs> um is slowly progressing down you've got your base roswell or whatever you've got different bases that's a good one actually um mothership slowly progresses down the ships are coming down on their columns and if they even inflict too much damage you lose you've got to do research that top left that left green track all the way up before you win but what you do is you roll five dice and you allocate them into the columns on your base one Mm -hmm. per column restriction uh to perform the actions like generate power research shoot down spaceships if they're in certain points you can roll the number and shoot them down with the guns but in order to get the good locations you've also got to use the little excavator token which i can't quite see there it's somewhere on that board yeah the little yeah, orange it's down toward the bottom you've got to move that along in order to <laughs> uncover the better rooms that you're gonna need in order to win um so it's it is it is a puzzle game you've got a little bit of luck with the die but you've still got the aspects of well you know 
I need to put it in that column, but if I do, that ship's going to move down that far. But if it lines up with that space, I can use the gun over here to shoot it down. Um, I played it on Grogan's live stream as a two player. You know, you can, I mean, it's so low, but you could play it two player working together to make decisions. Fine. Uh, but it doesn't take very long. We're talking a 30 minute thing. It's got campaign sort of style. Like it introduces extra modules or things like robots that you can build and bits and bobs. But I just found this to be, it almost became like a surprise of the year. But yeah. I thought, you know what? Check Game Edition solo game, this theme, I think I'm probably going to like it. And I, I did. This is one I'm going to take home for Christmas. If I, uh, if the parents are doing other things, I'm like, you know what? Hmm, I'll play this for half an hour. <laughs> yeah. Not the one I, like, I looked at this one and was like, looking really cool. And then like, oh, it's a solo game? No. Uh, so See, I skipped that. Some of us don't have girlfriends. <laughs> we have to make do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I discovered this one during my print and play stint in the early spring and yeah. then i found out that uh that check was check games edition was coming out with a nicer version i was very excited and it's definitely worth the cost because that one is just really one kind of set board and the the check games edition you've got all these different variables and module mm -hmm. module yeah. pieces that can come in and out so it's definitely worth the upgrade but i'm i'm, I'm quite enamored with this one all right, on the falling skies, Luke's number four, and uh, my number four is a game that I wanted to put it on the surprises list, but because I played so <laughs> few games of 2020, <laughs> I had to feel is it a video game. It's not a video game, not that time. <laughs> my number four is Phasmophobia. No. Um, so my number four is a game that I, would also be on my surprise list because. Uh, the last games, I wasn't keen on really trying them, or a few of their games I didn't really like. It's in the Tiny Epic series, and that's Tiny Epic uh, Dinosaurs. And uh, I was really surprised. I, I, even, I think I kickstarted it, but I forgot about that one. So That's more my because, problem than yours. Yeah, but it's a small <laughs> game. I was like, oh, whatever. Uh, but it looked cool. I don't know why I backed it. Maybe because, like, let's give Tiny Epic Series another chance. And, uh, guys, this is this is uh, not the Tiny Epic Galaxy's killer, but so far I like Tiny Epic Galaxy's the best, but this one I like even more. Mm -hmm. And you're building your, like, a dinosaur ranch, basically. Uh, it's a worker placement game. And you need to puzzle out how you put those dinosaurs because you have some rules and like you you cannot um, put these like um, there are carnivores and omnivores whatever you we have to split them up. I think this is not the this is the right picture. I think this is the final production probably. Uh, so yeah, and it it it's in a tiny box, but it's a lot of game in there and really cool spots where you can go to. Lots of choices, simple contracts. I don't know, it's like set collection things, so I just enjoyed it. And that's Tiny Epic Dinosaurs. Well, Not played. I thought it was okay. <laughs> okay. It, I haven't been wowed by the Tiny Epic series in general, so I still haven't played Quest. Yeah, yeah. So Quest is, is my favorite of them, but... Yeah. It, um, it, they're ones that I will try, I just haven't hunted them down. It's like someone's got to bring them and show them to me, I'm not going to seek them out. <laughs> Yeah, but dinosaurs seem to be the one that really does well within that uh, tiny game space. So, but yeah, the cards are have really small. Dinosaurs things. are epic. They should not be tiny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It could have been a normal board game, and then if they come up with some kind of expansion to that, I would be really keen on having an expansion because it might get kind of samey eventually. But I'm not the one who plays the games too many times in a row, so... Yeah. All right, Kyle, you're number three. All right, my number three is an ugly, ugly game, but it was it, it has gone over well every time it's come out. The game is sure. Beyond the Sun. Ah, for that, yeah. It's not that ugly. It it's is ugly that ugly. <laughs> I have seen it's it on ugly. pictures. It's ugly, it's the, 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 the product, the components are cheap. The cover's uh, the nicest it, thing on it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it really does not look good, but it really is good. Every, and it's it's very fast. Your turns are like that. 
It's a, it's kind of a worker placement game. You've really only got one worker, but really what you're doing is building up that technology tree. And then there's another board where you're sailing around and trying to take control of these planets so that you can put out your tokens and eventually take them and get points. It's very fast. It's very easy to get into and understand, but it really, it has a lot of different things that can happen and it's just a lot of fun. I was, I was really excited for it then i saw what it looked like and i was less excited for it but then when i finally gave it a try i really enjoyed it and i i i think this is one that will stick around for me it look it looks more complex than people are sort of saying it is i, I again it's this not is not complex at all it's got to be another one of the wishes i don't think i had the opportunity to get this as a review copy at all but it's just when i thought like right let's buy a few games to play i sort of thought Tech tree sounds good, but you're right. Yeah, I looked at the game and just thought that is horrible. It is like vomit inducingly bad aesthetics, but yeah. everybody is praising it. It's, I, it's I like the dice. The time. I like well, the dice. The dice and the feel cheap when you touch them, and oh, you don't okay. use them as dice. Fortunately, they're just counters. Oh, those cards. Those. The board doesn't look too bad. It's got the planet in the background, but those cards just look so basic. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it, yeah okay. And the graphic design. It looks like it could have used somebody to kind of think things through to draw and like <laughs> those tokens like those those tokens are printed only on one side which is really annoying because then you've constantly got to flip them over too cheap um, oh. it oh. just it feels cheap the card quality mm -hmm. is not very mm -hmm. good um the whole game comes off very amateurish feeling but it is great I think I, I would definitely play it, but this is definitely one someone's gonna have to show yeah. me I don't think I want to spend <laughs> money on yeah. that kind of component yeah. <laughs> True. The same for, I mean, like uh, the um, the technology tree. I'm totally in. I wanna I wanna play this game. I wanna get this game. But uh, like Nevada City is the second one they released this year. Mm. Uh, Nevada City, you know. Uh, but it seems to be more a complex game. Yeah. I I bought this game from another person, like a used copy, uh, for like twenty or twenty five euros. Of Nevada twenty City euros or for this a game. game. Huh? What? Uh, no, the, the Nevada for, City. So oh, I'm okay. I'm I'm looking <laughs> for if somebody's <laughs> yeah I'm looking for if somebody's gonna like uh, sell this copy, then I will buy it. But I'm really looking forward to to both of those releases, the Beyond the Sun and then Nevada City. If if I get them cheap, then that's fine. Yeah. All right. The one thing uh, this game does well, though, what? I'll just sort of say before I finish gushing about it, is many Civilization games have a whole lot of upkeep. Like, you know, you have to pay this cost every turn in order to keep your civilization alive. This game does it so simply and so well. So okay. you'll notice that when you play it, beat. but based on it's, you know, you're not able to produce more dice if you don't have at least a certain production level. It's super clean and simple. All right. Luke, your number three. Number three, quickly, is the big box version of the game is on my shelf over there. This is the smaller version of it, which... When I did my top 10 of 2020, I didn't want to just do reprints and implementations because I think the best games of this year were actually just reprints and implementations. But um, this is kind of like the one cheat because as much as I've kept both copies, this is the one where I could tell people, you know what, you don't need the big copy anymore. You could just buy this. And that was Mysterium Park, this mm. small box version of that game. Because I already love Mysterium. I love the Dixit card mechanic in general. Yes. This one basically goes, right, did you get a bit annoyed with the setup time of that one? Did it go a bit long for you? Uh, did you want it just two rounds rather than three? Then here's the small version, which, like I say, is barely big enough at all. I could even reach it from here. Oh, wow. You can get this played in a good... Whoop, you minimized it. Yes, now it's just me. I can, you can show You can show it. Can I can show the box. Oh, right, but, well, I can yeah. show the box, but, you know, 45 yeah, minutes, the game as you say is mysterium but you've only got two rounds person location still a ghost still giving out the dixit card still try and pick which one except it does away with the clairvoyance tokens which people weren't a fan of it's six rounds total for the whole thing um plus the ending round if that's how long it goes on for but you might win it before then uh, it doesn't have the setup time with the massive screen you literally just use that bit at the bottom there which is like code names a tiny little card with the grid that tells you what color everybody is so the setup time for this is like a minute teaching is about five minutes max less if you know how to play mysterium because it's 90 percent the same rules but 
45 minutes and this game is done possibly less if you do really bad or <laughs> do really well and yeah. it does a good job and i love the circus scene with it because you could bring out mysterium camp mysterium park mm -hmm. mysterium school and just do all these different themes with each one and if anything i think this one's harder to win because the fact that everybody's within that circus scene there's so much stuff that is repeated on cards not exactly but you go oh that one's got a flower i'll go for that oh she's got a rose oh that one's got a ah <laughs> and you see so many like duplications everywhere that as you're playing a ghost it's hard to come up with some good clues but it feels good when you do it it just mm. it's it's like perfect mini mm. you know short mysterium perfect <laughs> yeah yeah uh, mysterium was replaced for me at least by uh, obscurio because uh, it's like I, I wanted to have like <laughs> less downtime and everything like that. So it's basically a faster Mysterium with more action going on constantly is Obscurio. But I'm I'm curious about this version of Mysterium. If you say it's like narrowed down version and more mm. faster than it's. I've got around. both. Um, Obscurio I do love as well. That is a good one. Fun one. It, I just find that one a bit too hard to win that one. Sometimes okay. it's like it's like not an impossible to win that one. Sometimes <laughs> true, that's no, still fun. Oh yeah, All still right. Mysterium Park. Um, so my number three is a game I talk about a lot. Uh, at least Kyle hears about that game a lot. But it's a game that's marked down as 2019 release, but it's a 2020 because it's a Kickstarter game, and the backers got it in like January or February. 2020, and that's Living Planet. Um, so I think I got mine in 2019. I don't know if it's possible because they started <laughs> shipping I, at the end of December. I have never seen this game in my life. <laughs> we were done with obscure ones. I've never what? seen. I've never seen this game in my life. Uh, I know, but yeah, they started shipping in December, like the second half of December 2019. So it didn't arrive at the most stores. Maybe in US, I don't know. You got it a little bit faster, but okay. it's a 2020 game, definitely. So, uh, yeah, but this, this game is from Christopher Berlinger. And you can, you can tell that it's, it's like a spiritual successor to Archipelago. But that's where you can mislead people. Because many people thought that this is a spiritual successor to uh, Archipelago. And they wanted to have like Archipelago 2.0 in this game. But it's a completely different game. You have you have some similarities, but the scorings and things, it's more of an economic game. So you are basically, like in Archipelago, exploring uh, the world and then building up those uh, different um, buildings and um, mining resources. So you can sell those resources, like there's a little bit of stock market going on. And... Uh, yeah, the, the prices change all the time. You can you can crash the market as well. Uh, most points are basically money. You're trying to get the most money. Uh, but you can get a few points from other things as well, from, from buildings, etc. So, mm -hmm. but, <laughs> uh, but in this one, it's, it's also punishing because the tiles have those uh, <laughs> cataclysms. And everything is centered around the dice. So every round, um, it's like simultaneous action selection. Every round, each player chooses uh, the card in their hand. Everybody has the cards from one to six, like with the die faces, yeah? You choose one, and that's basically how many action points you are allowing yourself to have. But the die values are also cataclysms that will be, like, if, for example, here it says, like, a two blue. If somebody chooses two blue, then the cataclysm here will trigger and then something ga bad will happen, you know. So there's that strategic play of choosing not always most actions, but sometimes you, you, you choose less actions, but you are safe from the cataclysm. And you're building up, etc., exploring. I love all that. The first time I played this one, I was not so enamored with this one. I was like, uh, I don't know, maybe I was also expecting Archipelago 2.0. But the second time I played it, and, the, and then the third time, and I tried the expansion as well, uh, I was really enamored with it. I, like, I, I got rid of this thought of Archipelago, and I was like, this is its own game. Let's, let's do that. And, and I really like simultaneous action selection, the dice mechanic. A great game. Uh, Living Planet. My number three. 
I like Living Planet, but I think I, I think everybody who goes into it expecting Archipelago is going to be disappointed, and I think that's what happened with me. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I want, want when I teach it to people who played Archipelago. I, I tell them that don't, don't expect that. Archipelago. <laughs> it's not that game, and that's that's a problem of people. I think that's why this game didn't go high on well, everybody's list. It was sold as great... Archipelago 2.0. And it was, uh, that was kind no. of a bit of a bait and switch. And that's why I think it got a bit of a negative reaction. I At do first, enjoy yeah. the game, but it was I went in expecting sort of one thing, and it was a very different thing. Is what no, I to, to be honest, Kyle, <laughs> that was totally uh, not the designers or the eventual publisher. Like First it was uh, some other publisher, then they took it over, they logically took it over with Christopher Bellinger. They did not say or not sell it as the archipelago. It was people who were constantly saying that. And the word of mouth, you know, bashing the games before they come out. That's, that's, yeah, sad. But now my number three. Let's go to your number two. <laughs> All right. My number two is a game that's already been mentioned. It's a game that I spent the last week and a half playing a lot solo. Uh, that is Dwellings of Elder Vale. I quite enjoy it. I, I, I find the solo to be really good. Um, the multiplayer is also good. It's very simple. It's fast. It's large. And if you look at the box, it, it, I'm going to have trouble getting people to play it around here because it looks like the kind of game that people say, oh, I'm not interested in that. But if, if you can get past sort of the... I mean, that, that looks exciting to me, but lots of the people that I play with see that kind of game and, and go the other way. Um, <laughs> But I really like it. It's, it's very mm. straightforward. It's very easy to get into. There's a little bit of variety, but not a lot. I mean, the different races are kind of slightly different, but not in a major way. Mm. So it's easy to pick up on. And it works really well solo. Yeah. So. All right. Your number two. Uh, Luke, what's your number two? That was, by the way, the first crossover, I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the next two, I'm going to be heartbroken if these two aren't crossovers, unless you've not played them. That's fair enough. But uh, <laughs> the number two one, um, Pure Euro theme, where is it? Doesn't really exist, but this is the last in the trilogy of games of which the first one was brilliant. The second one was average. Third one, also brilliant, Viscounts. Viscounts of the West Kingdom specifically. Garfield games are just knocking it out of the park at the moment with some of these games. Not, not everyone's a massive hit with me. Like I say, I Paladin started off okay, but then I got a bit bored with it um, after one, sold it off. Architects is still on my shelf with the expansion. This one, I was like, looks good, but I can tell the theme is not there, but mechanically it sounded great. It got the townsfolk that I love, you know, where you've got different strategies you can go for based on what townsfolk you find. Four different clear actions that you're doing, which are very different in terms of game points. I mean, it is like a semi point salad in the sense you know it is purely mechanical you know you've got a rondelle with a bit of deck building with a bit of tableau building with that i can only describe as a pinball pachinko machine in the middle of with that castle you know so you're not going into this for a thematic <laughs> experience but everything just runs very smoothly in this and every time i play it i feel like i'm trying something slightly different with a variable setup you know what townsfolk you find during the game I mean, you've got five piles of cards there but there's quite a lot of townsfolk. Depending which ones turn up will influence what you do. You always feel like you've got a lot of options. It's not that difficult for me to teach it, even though it's purely mechanical because the thing. And it has one of the best solo Euro games. Sorry, one of the best solo modes I've played in a Euro game. You know, specifically a Euro game. But you just want something that is pure. I'm trying to get points better than the AI. This is one of the smoothest ones I've seen. Okay. Yeah. I've, I agree. I've, I haven't played any of the Shem Phillips games. Any, not the North Sea series, not the West Kingdom series. I don't know. I wanted to play the Raiders, and I just didn't get them. I don't know. Oh. At some point, it was hard to get them. So get Raiders and Architect played at least. <sighs> um, yeah, there's so many games, uh, and yeah, maybe I just had to skip this series, not to get trouble of buying them eventually, all, all of them. Um, yeah. All right. Um, Let's go to my number yeah, two. I liked this one. Oh, oh, sorry. Multiplayer, but I loved it solo. Mm. Okay. Okay, so my number two is extremely gorgeous game and uh, 
Kyle knows I, I loved it from the first time I played it. And it's a huge box, and this game got delayed by like at least one year, so it could have been 2019 game, but it's 2020. And that's Tidal Blades, Heroes of the Reef. And Tidal Blades, uh, I have the, the deluxe version of that, uh, with game trays and etc. And like uh, resin or whatever, the plastic pieces, things. But what I love about Tidal Blades, it gives me the Abyss vibes. Um, because it's simple and it's gorgeous, it has those, this kind of a watery theme, you know, <laughs> ocean theme. But in this one, each of you has this character and you have those uh, character sheets with dials and you are trying to uh, progress your skills, different skills, uh, by doing the, um, the trials, whatever they are and you get points from that, you're trying to get better dice because during the trials you roll the dice trying to match the symbols on them and you're also doing that work replacement stuff as well uh, trying to get better dice, more fruits so you can buy market cards which give you more resources everything is like interconnected and you also can fight the monsters and the cool part is that when you do the challenges, what are they called challenges, uh, when you do the challenges cards uh, your dice become used but if you fight the monsters you lose dice permanently so you have to get new dice so sometimes it's a decision when you want to use up your dice completely or you know do just the challenges and you are upgrading your, your when you're refreshing you're also upgrading your dice like white dice are the basic and then you can upgrade them to either the uh, usual blue or usual red and from that you can go even further so it kind of a you get you get better better dice which have more and more symbols that you can roll and you know do the challenges better it's a simple game but it's so engaging it's so beautiful it can drag on a bit if you're playing for the first time but if you get used to that and every player or character has its own deck of special cards which which are your special abilities and if you like progress on one certain dial you can get more of these abilities out, you become even better. I, I don't know, I just I just love the simplicity of it. It gives me abyss vibes and I love abyss to bits. So this one is abyss 2.0 for me. This is the, like another version of that basically. Kinda. But very different games of course. I, I, don't I really wanted to like this one more than I do. I, I've I've tried it and every time I've tried it I've always felt like something's missing it. Hmm. Yeah, I, I feel like I didn't want to get it to be more complex. I wanted to have it yeah. be like... Didn't back it, so I've not tried this one. I don't even think it had a retail release. I think it just came out on the Kickstarter a lot. But... Oh, it, it has the retail box. It's, this is the retail version. All right, that's, I don't think I've seen it in the UK much. Or perhaps I just didn't look at it. <laughs> Looks cool, though. It came out like in October. I think I got the Kickstarter copy or whatever. So uh, it seems like the COVID has uh, postponed the in retail release, probably. Ah. So, all right. Uh, and finally, number one, Kyle. What's your number one? What's your favorite game of 2020? Okay. Well, my number so one far. is a game that it is just one of those games that anytime someone comes over, this one comes out. This one's kind of like my version of Quacks and Quedlinburg for this year. Uh, in that it's a game that I play all the time and is not very available, at least here. And the game is Nidivalir. Mm. Nidivalir is this very simple... I'm spelling that. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's spelled it a oh. few times because I've talked about it a few times. <laughs> but you've got... You've, what you're doing is you've got these different... There's five different colors of cards and you're trying to get them and, and make your different sets. But the way you're doing it is you're bidding with these coins... And as you bid them, you're slowly going to upgrade them to bigger and bigger values. Or not. I mean, you can choose not to do that as well. And, and it's just, it's very fast. It's very easy. And it just works so well. It's, it's one of those games that I can teach to anyone. It works well with all of the player counts. It never takes very long. Everything's simultaneous, so you're not waiting for somebody to sit and puzzle out. 
you know, is this one going to be worth more than that? There's different mm -hmm. things to try. There's different, you know, you can try and sort of focus on each of the five colors. You can focus on getting yeah. sets of different of, of different ones. There's just lots of ways to play it. I might be making it sound a lot deeper than it is, but it's just a lot of fun. And it looks pretty good, too. Yeah, something I want to try, but don't know much about this one, All except right. from you. Still unreleased. Oh, no, it's released. I've got it. Yeah, but not here, eh? <laughs> yeah. Well, I had to buy it from France, but... Uh, so somebody, somebody told me about this. Is like, have you played this one? I'd never even heard of it. You know, the, the UK has really suffered with releases this year. <laughs> well, th this, one, this one is not widely available over here either. I, I had to go out of my way to find it. Oh, by the way, um, look, it's, in, uh, it's on Philibert, uh, the French website. That's where, that's where I got yeah. it from. You oh, can get a good with... shipping. There. Well, when yeah. he, well, I'm hoping that they'll eventually get the Kanban EV Kickstarter box in. So if I decide to get it from them, then uh, I could always bolt this one on. Yeah, so it's Give available. It okay. Maybe I'm get Vikings it. at the moment, but <laughs> all that sort of setting. But <laughs> if you do get it, make sure you tape that little stand together that holds the coins, because that thing comes apart very easily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Bye. <laughs> all right. So. Look, what's your number one? What's your favorite number game of 2020? One. No one's even mentioned it. That makes me sad. But this, I said it was the year of Czech game editions because yeah. both the games they brought out are fantastic. This one has, it doesn't bring necessarily anything new to the table, but it blends what we know and like and doesn't put a foot wrong in any category I review games on, which will be Last Ruins of Arnak. <laughs> or Arnak is good too. On yeah. that one. It, Everything that I do, whether it's like duration, ease of play, tactics, aesthetics, longevity, immersion, the game doesn't put a foot wrong. You know, yeah. no, it's not revolutionizing the genre. No, it's not like, oh, this brand new mechanic is so innovative. No, it doesn't have any of that. That's like the one negative I have. But it's a element of worker placement, which I like. It's got deck building in it, which I love. It looks absolutely gorgeous, both artwork and component quality. Like, there's no bad component in it apart from possibly the card stock, but even then, it's not bad, and I sleeve them anyway. It only takes like a pack <laughs> or two to do it. Uh, you've got two sides of the board. You've got a half decent solo mode. It's not a, it's not the. I probably would play it multiplayer more than solo, but I can play it solo. They're going to release free solo content for the game. Uh, they're putting it on their website soon, or something like you can play a sort of campaign version of it. Uh, but it it just brings out that whole Indiana Jones slash Tomb Raider style theme really well because you can do research, you can do the digging for sites, you can just build your deck full of cool cards, which are going to be different each game because they'll come out at different times. Uh, yeah. So you can play this game in a lot of different ways for points. Mm -hmm. I found it to be incredibly balanced. You know, if everybody knows what they're doing, you can play completely different paths and get some very tight scores. But the theme just comes out really strong with it because everything just works from the artwork to the cards. People will joke about like you know the movie references and that, and I still have fond memories of the Grogan game that probably could have been an experience actually. Uh, you know the Grogan game that I played on his live stream, where I spent most of the game just getting cool cards. I was just doing a whole deck building thing, and I think I started <laughs> off my preps for expeditions by buying a pocket watch, a hot air balloon, and a fishing rod. Like doing the whole Jerry Clarkson <laughs> thing of, you know, archaeology needn't be tough. So I'm going to buy everything that's all about creature comforts. <laughs> so <for> that. <laughs> but like one with two points in it, it was so tight. But this one is just, yeah, solid hit. It, 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 if, yeah. if we had been doing a top 10, it would have been on my top 10 for sure. I quite like this all one. All right. So um, basically, let's do that. It's my number one as well. So yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I it's a crossover. Talked, there's got to be a crossover, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This one, this one is the one I couldn't wait. Like right now, I'm not really buying games, but th this is the one I, I looked at. It was like, it must be my game. You know, I have to have it now. Uh, and um, I, I missed the pre-order uh, during the Essen Digital mm -hmm. was the uh, pre-order to check games edition, and after that, you could not really get the copies. But it seems like one of the shops probably did a pre-order from Czech Games mm. and got a few copies and was like, you have it. Yeah. <laughs> Take my money. 
we only got it at the start of this month, I think. Um, I played it online a couple of times, but only recently did I get hold of it. And it was literally like, it's selling out fast. This is it, buy it. <laughs> so I could get it, get it in stock. Because yeah. I made the mistake of not getting a lot of SM pre-orders because um, I didn't want to splash out that much money at the, for a virtual con. And I'm kind of regretting not doing that because there's yeah. a lot of games I could have got played had I done I actually spent more money then. But, you know, it's money. But this one was just purifier <laughs> hits. Like I want it, I play it, and it any player this, account, any side of the board, yeah. you know, it works. This this is my perfect the, the basically this this is a perfect euro. That's that's the one I want to play. Uh, I love exploration, I love deck building, I, I love rock replacement. That's that's the perfect one. And as you say as you said as well, like I went the um, uh, I went the uh, monsters and exploration strategy more. Hmm. And that probably won me the game. The other one, he got stuck into building too much of it, like too too big of an engine, and he didn't build it build it up. You know, it's like it's like the time is running. Like it's five rounds, and those five round rounds go fast. To be yeah. honest, like you, you, it maybe the game lasts like let's say if you play it maybe a four player game, it could last mm -hmm. like two hours, but. It, the time flies within mm. this game. You always think about what you can do, how you can maximize your cards plus the assistance and things, like small gears that you turn around. Yeah, it's mm. such a great experience. But yeah, thirty minutes a player is accurate. You know, too many of these euros are all about spending three to four hours playing the same game. This <laughs> is a two-hour game max. Sometimes it's two hours with three players if you've got a slowish one, but it never goes past two hours. Yep. So finally, and that's, <laughs> something that can keep find me. Uh, th this might be my top ten overall games contender here. Might be so. Mm. We'll see about that when I do the list again. But oh, top one hundred, top fifty title. easily. Where in the top fifty? No idea. But <laughs> I mean, top fifty easily. Yeah, well, I would even say top twenty-five. <laughs> but yeah, will but, be. wow, you will be. wow. So this this is it. This is the. Uh, Top five surprises, top five games, some experiences, few disappointments, uh, and Luke will probably share uh, more disappointments in a separate video. Maybe you should top do that. Top ten of 2020, I've got to edit today at some point, so that will reveal the rest of the games I liked. Even though I'm spend half the video apologizing for not liking 2020, <laughs> so, it's like I'm sorry <laughs> I have to ten games, you know, but that's why I do yeah. the respective ones that'll be good but uh i've got to do the podcast tomorrow that will probably be the surprise disappointment and bits and bobs so there'll be a few extras on there yeah i concentrated this year i concentrated on on games previously released i <laughs> i just i was just so i'm so tired of looking at the new releases i was like i don't care anymore and there are a few titles i still got eventually at the end of the year and some kickstarter things so that basically backed a long time ago but yeah I love re-exploring the older titles that I have on my shelf. It's just so much fun. I, I can now just play my favorite games, and I don't care about the new releases that much. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, that's that. Uh, so, everybody, thank you for watching. Uh, it's been a longer episode, but you can also watch it in... I'm going to put the timestamps. You can watch it in, in different like episodes, basically, yeah? You can just watch the top five this or top five that. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank All you, right. Luke, for coming uh, to the show once again. Yeah, you know, that, was, guys. <laughs> that was fun exploring games. A lot of obscure games <laughs> that we got to know. And we'll see you another time. Well, dude, yeah. Have a good Christmas and New Year, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs> yep. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>